So in this lesson, I'm going to take her head to completion. Because of how much the character design relies on grooming, I'm going to have to run some tests whilst I do her hair to make sure things are going to turn out okay. So what I'm saying is it's time to address the details of her dreadlocks. Unfortunately, they can't just be these tubular masses. All the hair emanating out of her scalp has to ride up through her hair tie and produce the correct amount of dreads up top. Because of the way real dreadlocks emanate from a scalp, the current blocked out proxy will not suffice. So I'm going to do a few sketches from reference images to flesh out the details of what we're going to go for. But before we get to ironing out the dreadlocks and getting it done, I'm going to design her face. At the end of this lesson, when the head is complete, I'm going to create some facial expressions in ZBrush to test the head design. It is very easy to end up with uncanny results when you are exploring unrealistic characters like this. So a few facial expression tests in ZBrush should let me know what to expect at rig time. Let's get started with a cleanup of the head shape. I'm shaping the cranial mass to better match the shape of the pulled back hair. I feel like the shape of the dreads on the head will look better on a cranial mass that is closer in resemblance to a human head. When I start attempting these locks coming out of the pulled back quadrants and twisting together to form one beaded looking shape, it's going to impact the silhouette of the head for better or worse. So I have to be ready to alter the dreads coming out of the head to get a good overall silhouette for the head. I'm going to start by trying to get the bottom side of this face looking correct. So I'm going to weld this head to this snout and do it by, let me exclude the ears for now and just say merge folder. So that gives me a final piece of this head together. Now I'm going to try, actually before I continue, something I should have done first. I'm going to delete this and divide this head a few times so I get a smooth result. And then merge folder to get a finished result. Now I'm going to duplicate this and dynamesh it. some changes here nose I felt like it should be an activate symmetry mirror and weld just to make sure I have an even looking piece and I really want this to for her I want her snout to merge into top of her face well I'm gonna make her look somewhat gaunt too the kind of look I'm going for, the lower face. I just don't want it to look too scary. So refrain from that. I start hinting at the mouth. gap of the eye, focus on trying to get her shape looking correct, I don't want this thing to be too pointy, for now just do a little bit of build up here, so we get a 
good looking snap. Alright, now I'm going to append a sphere. This is an eye. I have to gauge for a proper eyeball size or something close to real. That's about a good size for somebody's eyeball. Yeah, that lets me know that the way I've shaped her head is a little wrong. Just from the top, it should have a little bit more. This is too extreme of an angle for her brow. So, let's go back to her head shape. Grab the move tool. Turn off transparency and deal with making sure that her brow looks accurate. And I'm wondering whether she'll benefit from having a temple. So I'm going to see if I can go with like a flat form there. What is that hinting at a plane break over there? Let's see if that temp a temple will feel good. One thing I want to do is check from the profile to see if the peak of this eye is at the right place. So I'm gauging where the cornea is supposed to be. And based off of how I've dug into the eye, I don't think it's right. So I'm gonna turn on transparency. And the way I'm gonna find the peak is first rotate this eye about its center with shift until I get the pole of the sphere. And keep that on, turn on transparency. And yeah, if, if this Pole here were to be the center of the eyeball, I'd be wrong. So this needs to come down. And I think the eyes are far apart enough. So maybe not. Let me see if I can. This is basically telling me that I have to build up more form around the eye. And I'm going to simulate the bulge of the cornea. So I'm going to grab the move tool. Solo. And Hold on, alt to pull a bulge. That would be like a cornea bulge. So now this will help me build the form around the eye correctly. So I'm gonna go here, start building. I like how the width of the eye, so I wanna be careful. The eyeball might be too big. the bridge 
Alright, one thing I like to do is just to usually when the eyeball is about a good distance. Create this recession. I'm gonna extract the eyelids from this and duplicate it. And I'm gonna go extract that one zero zero two. Act as the bottom eyelid marker. in the prior lessons that I want the eyes to be beady so it's just kind of when it's when the mesh seems to be not respecting symmetry I'm doing some really weird things this is just helping create the cavern of the uh, the eye a lot better and I start to see these shapes come in. I'm going to resurface this also at a low number so I can get a manageable mesh and start. So now that I have these position, I'm going to start building up the a bridge. fat pad around the eye. I'm trying to marry it into, into the temple correctly. And this has a nice planar feel here, at least in humans. And 
gonna get a little bit of that. This is a little tougher because I'm not completely trying to replicate human anatomy. I'm just interested in what looks good. And for her, a flatter face is better. We have a more recessed uh, socket, and I'm wondering whether I should extend that to her. But I have to be careful too because this thing is supposed to have a certain amount of simplicity to not uh, make grooming too difficult. So. I'm looking for the happy medium between getting fairly realistic looking eye region, but also appeasing um, this, this stylized uh, design that I'm going for. Flatter face. overlap correctly. jumped into to this <laughs> completely forgetting how tough it is to assemble these structures for a head. to be getting there. I'm going to take this now that I have and delete that. Move the eye to more correct location.
pull these out just a bit. This needs to be pulled out too. Starting to look a little better and better. I had her eyeball or the corner region, it was too far inside. But it's basically telling me that the form around the eye is not built up well enough to accommodate the eye. So that's why it's good to use a sphere to start off with. All right, so I think with this central bridge I'm going to go with more human like swoop but in order to accommodate that I have to make sure I am going for an almond like eye shape with that it's looking right. I think I'm going to grab this and try to dig away at where the guts of the eye is supposed to be. Make sure there's nothing there so I can see how the form is looking like. The cavern is... I like to make the eyelids super thick, very, very thick, so that you can sh I can shave away at them as time progresses. The objective here is to make sure this eyelid is wrapping around the spherical eyeball very well. It's the, the sphere is your guide. The sphere of the eye is your guide to make sure you're building form around it correctly. Yeah, and this is a very thick eyelid, so. It will change as time progresses. And be careful what I just did there. You don't want to smooth it too much. fat pad it's always something I end up overemphasizing but I can always bring it down if you make a mistake and it's supposed to marry into what would be a cheekbone simulated cheek. really weird because I'm giving her these like really human like features in the top area there
you like those cheekbones. I'm going to come to this profile. I do see that. I want uh, that triangle shape of the eye to stand out really well. should have just extended here to create this nice cavern or whether I should marry the form here so that it's you can't outline this cavern so I'm just going to take a look at it for a while and come back and see what decisions I've decided are going to help make it look okay Appealing. I'm going to attempt to get these eyeballs in the right location. It's a little bothersome that there's, it needs to be almost in the, right in the center. I want it to be in the right in the center. It means the form is, is sort of favoring a portion of the eyeball closer to here. But the way I'm going to do that is go Z plugin, transpose master, T pose mesh. Gonna mask that. Let the mask. Okay. Now that her face is somewhat where it needs to be, I'm going to start working on her ears. And once the ears are done, I'll merge the eyelids and the ears into the head and then polish everything so I can move on to creating the mouth bag. So for the ears, let's come over here. Pick a strong intensity and start um, the proper shape. This would be a lot easier if I just hack in. For a snow leopard, is and pretty much with all wildcats, there's this like leaf or this additional pocket here. I'm not gonna put it in there. It's an extra additional bit of detail that is really not necessary. Um, but the ear and the same will apply when I'm creating the ear canal. It's not going to be as complex as the ear canal of a wildcat. It's just so much information. deal with this because if I make I need to make it the right thickness so that when it's shaded with subsurface scattering it's one of the places where 
subsurface scattering scattering is very prominent and so if I need to make it the right thickness so that it can it can get that redness in the ear when it's when it's rendered when we get to the edge it's really thin so I'm going to start shaving away at the edge which I just want to build up so I'm leave that thinness nice but I think it should establish some plain breaks uh, looks a little too rounded It's a good start. I think it needs to be welded so that I could uh, figure out how this cartilage is going to blend in here because over here, there's going to be fur. That's one of the prominent places where fur, I have to establish fur. I'm going to pull this. Make sure I have a nice shape in the profile too. This looks like an interesting shape in profile. Looks good for the front. And yeah, I think it's ready to be merged. All right, one thing I, I forgot to deal with was this lower lip and the main lip. It's, it feels a bit puffy right now. It shouldn't be that way. I'm going to test, when I finally create the mouth bag, I'll test how the mouth opens. But right now, at the very least, there should be, it should look uh, like it, it can be animated. What I'm looking for is a more flatter result for this area and an edge that defines uh, the lip for both for both bottom and top so I need like an edge and not enough information to completely finalize it let's get a defining line there. Make sure that I have a split. Might have made a mistake with this eye uh, lid. This top eyelid is coming down too much, it's giving her this really gloomy look. It's not supposed to do that. At least from the side here. Get a nice little angle like that. somewhere in this corner I think it's time to weld it 
I just keep tumbling to see if there's anything I should adjust before welding but it can all be changed at any point in time just tumbling a bit to see what it's looking like it's looking like with I've decided to not make it realistic at all. I'm just gonna make sure it's a nice, smooth transition so that I can very easily put a groom in there the way it needs to be put. Usually with ears, you have a lot of fur sticking out here. I'll be sketching an example of it very soon, but these transitions need to work well. They need to at least blend well together. But before I do that, I'm going to extract the nose, duplicate it, and divide just to get a cleaner mesh to extract the nose from. It should be a fairly simple extraction and detailing. Okay. I'm gonna come down to extract and extract that 0 0.002, that should suffice, except, and run a little bit of a smooth. On the edges first. And then in order to get a nice mesh, I'm going to just start Z remeshing. Usually one thing I like to do is Z remesh from like 5K starting and then step down and then it'll start averaging nicely as you step down in zero mesh again. And then I'll step down to like maybe a 0.5 zero mesh. And then I'll finish with maybe a 0.2. And it just keeps coming down really uh, gradually and you end up with a fairly good result. At this stage, I could smooth some more. It will take me there. And with symmetry on, I'm going to start shaving to get a nice smooth transition. Might have to clean up the transition a lot more. Make sure it tapers correctly. Actually, I might be being a little over ambitious, thinking I'm not never going to need to merge it. I might have to, so I'll keep that in mind. I'm going to shave here, make sure that it marries into it well now. And then it's time to merge it. Before I merge everything, I'm going to get some more fixes in. So this mouth should stack correctly. I should be able to fit teeth in there uh, naturally. I'm 
going to simulate somewhat of a lip here. This mouth will be open very soon, but I have to really think about how the teeth are going to work. She smiles. It's going to go this far. It's going to slide back. It also has to slide on the surface partially. So I just have to make sure that I can put teeth in there. Like if I had bottom teeth and they extended here. If the arc of the teeth was like that, then when she smiles, I can slide the skin back onto what would be the teeth. All right, so just want to make sure the head shape can receive good teeth. This split too, I have to be very careful with it. A little bit of tumbling to see what I have in preparation for the merge. The merge looks like it's going to include everything the lids, the nose, the ears, and then start polishing and worrying about things like the nostrils. Okay, it's finally time to merge. I'm going to merge all of these pieces into subdivision levels so that I can step up and down out of the necessary forms. The subdivision level system I'm about to create is by no means the final subdivision level because this head has to eventually be connected to the body that I finished. I just want need something right now to be able to continue with subdivision level workflow. So I'm going to take all the elements that are supposed to be weld it together and put them into a group of head weld this is the nose it belongs in there this neck does not belong there ears belong in there eyes do not belong in there lower eyelids belong in there upper eyelids too it looks like these didn't take this old head was into the trash. So now I'm gonna to go to this group, go merge merge folder, and it should create a copy of everything. Actually, I did leave out a step. I'm gonna delete that, go back into the group, and make sure I subdivide these till they're all smooth. I want a nice smooth result. Start with the ears, divide a few times just to get a nice smooth mesh with no faceting. I'll do the same for the eyelids. smooth mesh and the same with the nose okay. so now I'll take that and merge folder and get this end result and this end result I'm just duplicated I have a copy let me now delete the lower subdivision levels in order to dynamesh without that warning message so I'll go dynamesh this is too little, so I definitely need to go higher. Dynamesh. Yep, that's pretty good. It's good because I didn't even notice it. For now, I'm going to hide this head and the eyes too. And then I'm going to duplicate this mesh and Dynamesh at a significantly lower number maybe about 240 and at 240 i'll do a kind of mesh i'm going to test it to see what it feels like that's pretty high i don't want this to be my lowest subdivision level so i'm going to go a little bit lower and i mesh again 
and this should suffice so i might do this a few more times if it's not giving me what i need but for now i'm just going to project all the detail onto this mesh so i'll divide project divide project and i think this is a pretty good starting point i'm going to start with the ears come down and smooth this transition and a nice smooth transition and all this is going to be covered in fur so I need it to just be smooth enough to allow the fur system to do its thing So the typical type of detail I would be emphasizing on the body. I won't be doing it this time around. Looks like I forgot to turn on symmetry. So when you forget to turn on symmetry, the way to port detail to the other side is with smart symmetry. But that works a little weirdly, so I have to mask one half of it. First turn off symmetry, mask one half of it. Actually, the half that you want the symmetry to be transferred to and go smart symmetry. And then it moves the information there. All right, so now I can activate symmetry so that everything I do happens on both sides. And I really should be doing all this smoothing on this much higher subdivision level. So this cleanup is going to be happening. Be very careful here. I come over here and I feel like I might have underemphasized. Well, now that it's together, you think about a proper transition where this eyelid just a little bit more. A lot more meat up there. I can have to build up that fat pad. A little bit more. to deal with is this corner of this eye. Emphasize this. Turn on lazy mouse so I get a nice controlled grind. I want to do a nice blend here with this lid. Show 
this split okay. this is something I need to put in here. I'm going to test to see if they actually look good. If it's just an unnecessary little detail. Actually, it looks good. Just have to make sure it's designed well. this and shave it to make sure it transitions correctly. I've decided not to do any complicated things in this ear. There would have been a lot of things that I have to consider. But uh, I think it just needs to be left nice and uh, smooth. There's no point in designing any hardcore detail here because this body will not use displacement maps, so I can't pull this information. I don't want to have to deal with X-Gen and displacement maps. It works pretty well. You can have the groom 
work on top of a displacement map, but there's simply no need here. So if I do create a very excessive amount of detail, like over here, there's a lot of detail here. I'll make sure there's a whole lot of topology over there to be able to capture the detail because this body simply is going to have to survive on its own. So all the detail needs to come through on the final model. That would include these eyes. Everything around these eyes will have significantly more topology, significant more topology around the nose. And I'm okay with doing that because there's no groom here and there's not gonna be any groom on these eyelids. And everything else that is gonna have groom is gonna be nice and smooth. Let me see if these ears are the best shape. Maybe I can manipulate them at any time, but that's the great thing about also keeping them simple is I can do a lot of manipulation at rig time or even before rig time. If I feel like a better shape will work. So if you leave it without that much information, you have basically given yourself a nice simple shape to play with. Most I'll do here is make sure I have good quality line from every conceivable angle. of some type of a lip. I'm doing a lot of things differently on this project because this is uh, be my first uh, official character that I groomed to completion and rigged. So I have to catch myself from doing a lot of things that I'm accustomed to doing. You might see me do some things that I look back on and be like, this is unnecessary because it's not coming through in the final model. sculpting ahead and be almost close to the final shape at this stage. I usually expect a lot more work, so having a little bit of time, except in the fact that this is pretty much as far as I can go for this project. So I'm going to spend the time here just really polishing these shapes. We should be dealing with this too. No. The eye bag is a little simpler to deal with. Just have to push things in. Not a mask. No. So I don't impact the tip of the, the lip of the eye lids. aggressively push in an eye bag. There's gonna be a whole eyeball here with a whole bunch of internal parts that help to contribute to the final rendered result. And it needs room to do all that. But ultimately this eye bag can be, I might have to deal with it the same way I'm dealing with uh, the mouth bag, which is taking it to Maya to create it. But for now, I'll just push it in. 
so it doesn't get in the way. All right, I wanted to do one more subdivision level so I could put in the lacquer mill and see how it's behaving. This thing needs to be cleaned up and converted to the final high-res mesh. Which one have all these little weird artifacts that you see in this nose here. So I'm getting ready to do another dyno mesh or a cleaner mesh because this subdivision level has served its purpose. And it would be it's almost over. The sculpt session is almost over. So I'm gonna make sure that this line Standard here to define this edge. This will just clean up. And I'm going to mask this and run a clay polish there because it looks. Well, most of this, when I resurface for the new mesh, it'll fix all of these weird artifacts. So I'm going to go clay polish. Go just to clean up that area a little bit. Yeah, it won't really do much. It just needs a fresh new resurface to behave. I'll deal with this here so I can get the lacquer mill in there. Just isolate the eye. surfacing now so I can get a mesh with the fresh topology and then I'll put in the lacquer mill. I'm going to duplicate, delete lower and just remesh at yeah that should be enough for me to clean up all these weird artifacts. So now this mesh is moldable. It's not confined to the topology that I had before. Dining mesh is amazing. Uh, 
after resurfacing I will come back and clean up this topology even more this sculpting more but I'll have the final shapes then resurfaced into proper topology Side of this nose too. Now that we zoom out first, let's lift the snout. So should be able to hack and get better responsive, get a more responsive mesh. Now that it's fix this weird artifact inside the nose. something that's deep enough to provide a good amount of occlusion. This just helps add some realism to the eye. It's pretty hard animating around it though, but as long as it's rigged properly, it doesn't become too much of a problem. Okay. 
Looks like it's gonna have that gap here. Activate symmetry, mirror world. Keep adjusting it. As time progresses. and inspect it a bit. See if my eye picks up anything that is wrong. All right, so I'm going to move on to getting the teeth and the tongue done. I changed the material just so I can see it under different conditions. So I'm using PolySkin. Before I start the teeth, I'm going to not create a mouth bag but create an opening here and the way i like to do that is let me start by auto grouping the whole thing and then i'm going to take uh, a slither of polygons around here so i'm going to hold on the mask too Let me turn this off first. So I'll mask it and then turn that polyframe on and go group mask. That should pretty much be enough. But what I want to do is actually delete this. But what I'm going to do is go under here under deformation. And there is a polish by groups, which should, yes, clean it up just a little bit. Yeah, that should be good. So what I'm then going to do is isolate this piece. And I should have a opening. So I can delete hidden. And I think, I hope this is not connected. So let me see if I can take them apart. No, I can't. So I'm going to select this. They seem to be the only two connected polygons. And make sure I haven't selected anything in the back and I have so I'm going to make sure I bring it back and then switch over and then I'm sh I should be able to delete those two polygons I selected so I'll go delete hidden so what I'm going to do is I'm going to postpone the mouth bag and the uvula for the retopping stage right now I'm just going to focus on creating teeth and gums and a tongue that are sort of floating in there. And then when the mouth bag comes in, they'll make a lot of, it'll, make, it'll all make a lot more sense. But one thing I think I could still do here is this opening, if I solo it, 
I should be able to do a polish by features. Yeah, and that should clean up the opening just a little bit more. And that should be fine. This in here, here doesn't really matter because once I resurface and bring it back and I'm projecting, I probably will not project any of what's in there. So I'll mask and make sure that the projection doesn't catch any of it, just so I can get nice clean subdivisions that come about from the good resurfacing that I do in Maya. That's another thing I haven't mentioned is that with this character, the body will be done by hand. The body and the face will be done by hand because I really need some one unique topology for the face to get a proper animation friendly mesh. And I've also mentioned that I need more dense polygons in certain areas. So that, that I'm going to do by hand. A majority of the other assets of this character will be resurfaced with ZBrush's auto remesher, which is called Z remesher. So, but we're not there yet, so we're pretty far away from that. But I just wanted to give a heads up that you know that the body and the head are the only things that are going to be done by hand. At least for now, that's what I think. So now that I have the opening in there, I'm going to start with the gums. So I'm going to append, I guess I could append a ring. So. And I'm going to delete one half of it. Delete hidden. Close holes. And I guess the top could benefit from just being knifed down. I'll turn off perspective. Just cut that down. And I'll do a Z measure just to get some different type of topology. Bring it down a little bit more. Activate symmetry in there and weld. And this is just the beginnings of a gum. I'm gonna leave it pretty low polygon for now, just so I can shape it. I'll do the top first, duplicate it to get the bottom. Let me get this gum in position. Turn on transparency. It's truly large. Make the gums fairly tall. That looks good. So basically, one of the things I really have to watch out for is when she's smiling. This is definitely cheek. I want a lot of meat here, but when the corner of the mouth is sliding across her face, it has to slide across the teeth here. So the arch of this gum here is very important. I have to determine that now. So I have to determine whether it's reasonable for her, the corner of her mouth to end up here, inside, and this wide to end up around here when she smiles. And then maybe with the rig, I can end up playing with it some more, but this appears to be a reasonable arch for the gums. So I'm going to start adjusting it, even if it doesn't, even if it ends up being too, it's not a wide enough of an arch, I can vary, it's very easy to modify it to mask and just rotate it out a little bit more. And so we'll see how things turn out as I put in the teeth. But this is one of those models that, parts of the character that you can adjust very easily. So I'm going to go to solo and I'm going to get a circle tool. I'm going to drag it so I can get it on there just to shave off that much of it. Okay. I think this should be enough to receive the teeth. I'll take the name in standard and create sort of like the edge of the gum. Okay. I'll leave this like this for now. So the plan is to have four molars and premolars and we get to the canines 
It can be long, sharp, then the incisors in the front. The whole thing will look like human teeth and gums. The only thing about it that will be close to a feline or close to a snow leopard will be the canines. They'll be really long. So the incisors will have about four and the premolars and molar will also add up to four. All right, so let me start doing the budgeting for this. I'm going to append a cube to get the two incisors in the middle. It's easier to have it uh, do them together if you separate them because of how close they are. It's very hard to adjust them. I'm going to move all these heads, these duplicate heads into the trash. this just to get it and I'm going to make uh, specifically the molars and premolars almost freakishly large I think it's really cool when characters stylized characters like this open their mouth and the teeth are really fairly big right so um, or at least I'm envisioning that being looking cool right now so we'll see how it looks so I'm going to activate symmetry very well just to make sure I have Similar thing happening on both sides, and then I'm going to re remesh this and mirror weld again. Okay. And then start shaving at this part of the gums. Smoothing a little. And might want to take these and move them a little bit forward. And the reason for that is I'm going to start the top part of the teeth that have an arch like. Eventually going to separate these incisors, but for now, it's better to process them as one. It's just a little bit easier to deal with, and then once they're completely fleshed out, they can be separated. I get the right shape of teeth. And with these incisors, the inside of the gums will definitely be smooth to receive them. And another thing that I should be getting is it should taper. Actually, I think I will shave at them instead. So I'll shave at them with my trim dynamic tool. So I take a little longer to do, but I think it's considering its very unique shape uh, because of the arch, it might be easier to get it done this way. Because if you look at your front teeth, if you feel them with your Tongue, you'll see this recessed thin portion at the bottom that goes into the thick base, which is a root, which ends up uh, as this protrusion that goes into the gums. I'm not creating the protrusion though. There's no need to create geometry we don't need. So I'm gonna avoid doing that. 
This is about the shape of, of the incisors. Yeah, something like that. It's a definitely a lot more of an organic shape, but for now, I think this will suffice. I'll chip off the edges a little. They look pretty good, so I'm going to duplicate that, this to get the ones on the side. But I have to do some cutting of the central part. Yeah, like that. And then weld. No. I want the other side. So the easy way to get the other side for a mirror and world is to then delete hidden and then go activate symmetry mirror and world. Okay. So that should give us the two other incisors. Let's move. And they're definitely not this big. They're just a little bit smaller. I'll move them closer, but I'll make sure I select them at the base. They're just a little bit smaller. I'm down. Like that. And I definitely have to make sure that they are following the correct trajectory along the gums. Those are the incisors, pretty sharp. In order to see how they're fitting on her face, I'm gonna select the lower part of her face and hide the lower side of her mouth, just to start seeing what it's looking like. This is about a good amount of thickness for the lips, so, it means I have to move these elements, the gums and the teeth back a bit. So I'm gonna put them in a folder. I'll put them in a folder and go transpose set, center and move them back. So they're clearing the lips. It's supposed to slide along them. So we need to be further back. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It looks like there's still some of the lower side of the face. Smooth it. Alright, so it should be hit it now. Using the selection tool, let me turn on double. Make sure I can see both sides of this mesh just so I can bring this back. I just want to hide the lower jaw and see what's happening with the teeth. Yeah, they look to be about at the right place so far, but they'll be rigged too, so I can position them whichever way I want in the mouth. So right now they can sit here, but if I find out that it's not good, I can always designate changing their position at the rigging stage, but it looks good now. So I'm going to hide this, go back to my teeth. And I'm going to start working on the molars and premolars. A sphere, so I'm going to append a sphere. Scale it down. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solo it and shave off the insertion point just so I can start getting the shape that I want. They are very, it's a very unique, weird shape. Uh, I'm going to bring it down and zero mesh it at a lower value and start slicing it 
to produce this really weird shape. So, this string it has like this cross effect. For a pre-mower, I'm not gonna go too far. It's in the back of the mouth. It really doesn't have to be that detailed. I'm trying to get. Let me make sure I'm orienting it correctly. Also, I have to make the gums bigger in the back to accommodate them. So I'm going to select this because they're fairly large, significantly larger than the incisors. So other we're going to be flush with each other so I have to prepare for that and they're so far back in the mouth that I don't really care so much about detailing and so too much but it should be detailed enough so that when she opens her mouth to scream you can at least see the details sessions a lot more eventually you know you tone down but for now I'm gonna push them as much as possible. Try to design this a little better. It's a very organic shape so it's not um, perfectly symmetrical about its self. I'm trying not to thin them out too much. Now, in reality, I think that the molar is smaller and then there's some a specific sizing of the premolars as you move towards the canine. But for the sake of just getting like something that looks good from a design perspective, I'm just going to taper them down to make them smaller as we move closer to the incisors. Right, so I'm going to go smaller and collectively I might have made them too big. Now auto groups so that these get unique poly groups so I can yet again Control drag to get the next one. And I might be only able to fit three in there, which is fine. I was going for four, but I'm not going to go out of my way to add a fourth one if it's just not feeling natural. But I think that when she opens her mouth, I need as much information as possible going deep into the mouth. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to put a fourth. I'm going to accommodate a fourth by selecting this, moving the gums further back into her mouth. Like 
and then just select these to make sure they're moved back. Auto group again so I can give each of them unique polygroups and then move them to make sure they're fitting. And it kind of looks a little silly right now, but when I get the last one, I'll start shaping them so they can look more cohesive. So the last one, I'm gonna control click and drag to get it. Scale it down yet again. And there we have it. So I want to move it to the line correctly. All right, one thing for certain, it's time to start dividing this and making sure it's, they're looking like real gums. Should be coming down, covering the majority of this. mirror and weld auto group mirror and weld to get them the other side and I have to make sure that they are in fact flush with each other your molars and premolars don't have gaps like that they have to be fairly flush shaping make sure that also on the inside the gums are extending down to fill in all the way in the back definitely have a lot more gum covering sure that these incisors are properly represented. Incisors are definitely significantly smaller than uh, the premolars. Well, at the top, at the bottom, uh, they're significantly smaller. By the top, I think I have the correct ratio. If not, I'll change it later. Yeah, these are aggressive digs into the molars and premolars. Might be too much. And I do have to shave a little bit at these. They're not that uh, crescent, they're not crescent shaped. They're really fairly planar shaped. So let me just start doing that now. They'll get their detail soon, later, as I move to finalize them. But for now, I'm just gonna shave off a little. Alright, and then I'm going to now get in the canines, which are the most prominent, so that'll also be a sphere. So I'm going to take this, scale it down, move it forward, I'm also going to find a way to do his, it'll be a combination of rabbit teeth and human teeth, so that's also going to be an interesting one. All right, so for these canines, what I like to do, also come down, easy remesh. And then it's just a matter of just pulling on them. OK. 
keep them fairly low for a long while until I have the, sh the exact shape I want. They are really tubular, so the back is not going to be shaved, but it's important that the shape looks attractive. So I'm going to keep it low till I'm very comfortable with what the shape looks like. Activate symmetry in learn world. And yeah, that's a good starting point. I think I'll let them ride higher. Yeah, like that. Sharpen them. more important to see what they look like in her face. Mm, yeah, that's really large. To make sure that they, they arch forward like this. They're gonna wrap around. These animals have a we call I guess an underbite. Well, overbite, because the stuff on top goes over the stuff at the bottom. You know, the ones at the bottom will be more pushed in. I need to do them shortly. It'll just be a duplicate of this with some additional adjustments. So I'm going to put these. Pre-molars and molars in there. And I'm gonna move this again. So I'm gonna go transpose set. Make sure it's centered and move all this back. Come back. Okay. Now I'm gonna do some some design. This thing looking straight feels a little weird. So I'm going to take it and produce some type of an arch like this a little arch okay. and then now i'm going to go to this gum and really start building up up because gum is really they're accommodating the I've forgotten what this, the, I think the root, of the tooth, uh, it needs to be represented on the surface of the gums. So this is the initial build up. Just to get them. And as I add more subdivisions, I'll have more definition there. I'm going to make sure this looks right. I just gave her a gap in between that and that's not cool. Doesn't look right. So I'm going to have to make something thicker. And this ended up with the height overemphasized. It's wrong. It's supposed to be this much. Yeah, this little gap here is not gonna work. So I'm going to make the, the molars thicker. Sorry, the canines, these are canines. I'm gonna turn on local symmetry so I can get a thick. thick. 
Ah, oh, there's a mistake. Alright, now I see why they weren't. Because these are out of positions. They have to be here. And then that to have to accommodate in here and making sure this gum is not too far forward. So. And since these are really big, the mound here for the root should be significantly more larger, it should be out more. make sure they look good. It has to look good. So I have to go for all the realism. I have to go in there and make sure from design perspective they're looking good. I'm staying at this really low subdivision level for now just to get something a good starting point. View, they also look good. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like the, the incisors are feeling like a bad uh, de dental job. They look really big. You know, when people go have these procedures and they have them looking really large. So, I'm going to reduce them a little. good when there are gaps in between them. It doesn't look healthy. So close these gaps. Make sure I'm getting that on the inside too. weird feel to it. And it has something to do with the fact that these are uh, a little too, um, there isn't a dip from the gum, it's just in there more, at least from the outside. Okay, so this is is that the back teeth feel a little thin a little emaciated so just to make it a little easier to work on it all I'm going to merge folder I want to be able to work on all of them at once and I'm gonna come take my move tool start thickening Start making these bigger and I'll take my move topological and start working on these teeth. They have more of like a, a cuboid type feel. Not these uh, ovoid feel. So yeah, that looks about right. And then
Let's create like a little shelf here. To simulate that uh, that part behind your teeth that just has nothing of using any topological with it. I'll get many opportunities to shape this. This is like a really abstract organic shape and it's fairly simple mesh so even when the final mesh is achieved you can still be moving stuff around a lot okay now this is also a good time to duplicate it to create the bottom so i'm going to duplicate it and flip it first center pivot turn on our active turn off symmetry center it and hold down shift and flip it upside down and turn symmetry back on and move it down now the way it stacks is very important right so i'm going to turn this off turn off transparency and initially i'm for sure going to be back because it needs to slide onto slide on uh, behind the canines and these need to be sort of like uh, this serrated feel like where it allows uh, us to masticate i think that's the word it just allows us to tear it, the way the teeth are stacked like this this offset way allows us to tear flesh as we're eating well for all mammals or anything that has teeth first thing i want to do deal with is the incisors they're not as big auto group mirror and weld and these incisors are significantly smaller so are the canines Yeah, we're gonna have to make some accommodations to make this work. No. These should be smaller. These canines should be just a little bit smaller. So I'll do that first. And then these canines up here. I'm going to move them a little bit forward. Yeah, that looks good. I need to come forward like that. I need to really take the head into the entire head into consideration. And group visible so I can come back to the state. Yeah. That is not gonna work. These teeth overall are just too big. I'm gonna turn on transparency. Figure out how much scaling has to happen. Because those are some really large teeth. It simply won't fit in the mouth. So first let me worry about how to get these things to fit inside the mouth. So as a collective, I'm going to go transpose set. Uh, turn off symmetry for now. I'm just going to be moving it. So I'm going to scale it down first. And make sure it fits in the mouth and I think I'm also missing the angle which it's supposed to be at and how high it's supposed to be It's also telling me that I feel like this 
be a lot farther ahead than I have it. Move about there. I do think that the biggest, at the same time, I need to be able to shut the mouth to be able to get a nice clean. Grinding of the teeth. Those incisors do need to touch too, so that's another thing to take into consideration. This perhaps should not have been so rotated forward. I'm going to start pushing because this is not a real protrusion. Like this really eats into your the meat of your mouth. It's not like a big gummy protrusion that extends. So I have to take that into consideration. But ultimately this canine is supposed to be significantly smaller slightly smaller I think in my I used to do a lot of wildcats uh, 3d models I did in 2021 and it's just slightly smaller but I think the main thing for it is that it's a lot more inside too I forgot about that the canines on top wrap around for some some of these animals I'm going to yeah I completely forgot that this bottom one needs a lot of shaping. I'm going to scale it down first. Remove the meat to its right location and I have to accept. Let me solo it and I'm going to pick this, move it in there. Okay, okay, okay. Still have this top canine penetrating the gum. It's not as gummy. It's just too much. The extension is way too much. The masking. Blur once. Same actually applies to the top too. We have overgummed this character. This is how teeth in, are usually made for 3D characters. You can actually connect them They're just out there and they sit inside a mouth bag. In order to make these incisors connect, I'm going to modify this entire mass. If you look at uh, Wildcat Anatomy, this, the incisor mass for Wildcats, these, the mound of gum that the incisors sit on is extended far forward. It looks very grisly. I'm not trying to simulate that too much. For now, I just want her to look like she can chew sensibly. So I will make a slight modification. Rotate and move this. Just a little. I want it to look like she has crooked teeth. 
might be underestimating how much smaller these incisors are. And there's a mistake there. First, I'm going to move them back so we have like cut a gap. No. Oh. I have to scale them down as a collective with symmetry off. this but it doesn't look too gappy in the wrong areas move it just a little bit closer these are starting to look really fake they look like uh, chunks of gum shoved into the mouth. They're looking a little too pristine. And they also have the kind of wrong form. I'm gonna bring this down and, and build up. central part. Careful how they stack when she smiles. I don't want like light passing through these weird gaps, so I want it to really fill in. And they feel like healthy teeth, but when they're too, when there's all this space in between, it doesn't feel healthy. Like a healthy person, so I have to be careful with all these gaps. I think past this point. To start considering the overall design of it to make sure it at least looks good, not just about making it look anatomically sound. So, we're making some good choices too, like here. My benefit from having like this arch, archy feel, and probably could extend that to the bottom too. start. I'm going to stare at it for a while and not just move things around. I stare at it and see if I'm making some choices that are not so good. I will have to file these things down. Looking really good here. It's supposed to be incisor, so I should need to cut through stuff. Here to make sure. 
sure this has the right form too. separation it's starting to look weird and behave weirdly too I just don't like to separate them because it becomes significantly more difficult to deal with them you end up having to leave a little bit of a gap there so I like to wait till the very end just split them apart treated yet. Just a tad bit bigger. Turn this off. Okay, yeah, to the point where it's just penetrating slightly. And I think this should be good. And this is all lip. Well no, there'll be lip and then a lot of inyards. Of the lip, I have to make it the correct thickness, fairly thin. Just wondering if this is a good enough distance from the mouth. But there's another thing that I think I'm getting wrong, and it's the arch of the incisors. I'll hide her head. I'm going to take the move tool. to fix that I got a burn weld fixing uh, where offsets I may have produced I'm going to make adjustments here. I just want them to stack properly.
And these are really long. Might have been a little bit too over ambitious with the height of these incisors. You just look like a too much of a carnivore. Or a mixture of human and anthro leopard, so I need to make some find a happy medium. We don't have these aggressive looking. So let this thing and see how it's faring on its own. Yeah. These gums will be taken to a much better place right now. I have to focus on how they are housing these teeth. that gap. I think it's going to hurt anything. I'm going to pull a reference sheet of wildcats that I assembled a long time ago and let me see if I can take some properties of them that I see here to figure out how to adjust the canines. So they look good and stack well. This is what I was talking about, that really extended part of the gum where the incisors sit. But I'm not gonna do that because it looks just too grizzly. Um, the T, yeah, the small ones, the lower ones are slightly smaller. Especially this is a, this is actually a, a stuffed, I think a stuffed uh, art art piece. So that artist probably took liberties too. And this is Snow Leopard. Yeah, this is just a little bit too rough. So I think I've gotten what I need from Wildcats, just this sharp canine. But there's some part of, I don't like how it's angled, it looks a little weird. It has to come a little forward. There's a price to pay for that. So outward. Reevaluating it, and I also have to consider that these are fairly thick. They are really thick, and they also need to have this nice design from the front. It's a nice little arching design. Yeah, these incisors are looking more and more like sticks of gum just shoved into place so i'm really gonna have to keep pushing them until they start looking like natural incisors of a human part of it is also because i am missing the how it tapers into position and how much gum 
sits in between. And it really looks like it might be time to separate this so it can take its shape because it's going to help excel the shape till it's time. part really is at the top as it goes down to the edges it's a lot plainer teeth are such a, a tough thing teeth and gums I forgot it's a completely whole other project like a whole other modeling project to do teeth and gums just dove into it let's see what this thing is feeling like I'm going to have to test a smile and some other things very soon. That's the other thing I got to be careful about. This is a very unique head shape, a uh, very unique looking character. It's pretty much nothing in life This has these proportions of the head. So the teeth have to accommodate that. So after a while, they're going to stop looking hyper realistic and they need to fit into this face this design. One thing I'm seeing is I'm going to transpose set. These incisors feed into gums like, like this. There's like a, a recessed area here. At least that feels right to the mouth. They continue the uh, sharpening shape of the teeth, moving from the gums all the way up into uh, the to the tip of the teeth. Just want these mounds to blend into the mouth bag properly. So now when she opens her mouth, it feel, they feel connected. So I'm not just traveling down. And I'm about to get a tongue shortly. So that'll help us see how this stuff stacks together. And I want to continue this pursuit of not having too much gappiness because when the character smiles and light is uh, coming through the teeth it looks very uh, horrible if I have to make the teeth more wholesome then that's what has to be done but I want to avoid these gaps yeah I'd rather they overlap each other better to lose the gaps so I'm going to keep finessing this until they're almost sitting on top of each other. Imagine looking at this angle of her smiling. And, and this is just not good. Too much light will come through. I need to figure out how I'm going to resolve this part. I feel like it's just a matter of making these incisors thicker to match up. Yeah, that might that will work and then Also need to have them overlap. 
100%. Want to be careful not to end up with buck teeth. And also this alignment doesn't feel like dentally, uh, aesthetically cool. So I need this nice little swooping, right? swooping design. Have them overlap to fill in the gaps. I might not um, separate these. Just fine tune them to work together well. Okay. There's something I need to do here at the top. Also, these teeth, if you Rub, run your um, your tongue along the top part of your gums. You'll see it's really recessed and it blends into the teeth really well. So I'm gonna take that, isolate it, and smooth it. You gotta be careful there. It's not the operation I should have used. Take this and shave. This, but it should at least try to look correct. Let's put some of this grizzly feel of the gums. Yeah, no light gaps. So I think it's good. And even if I end up finding any while I'm testing my render, I guess I'll have to come back and make the adjustments in ZBrush and propagate the changes uh, up the chain to the final model. These teeth will more than likely have used displacement and or normal map. So, because um, when a character opens their mouth, that's a whole different uh, visual you have to sell. So. None of it counts on fur and anything. It's all rendering, subsurface scattering, proper uh, roughness maps, and potentially transition meshes. I hope I don't have to create a transition mesh, but um, definitely have to make these feel the correct type of wetness. So I'll be preparing for that. Yeah, I think this, this looks good, at least with the teeth closed. I'm gonna test out a smile. I'll see how well they're working. But yeah, it's not gappy. And it's it's looking fairly good. Take this and isolate. And I am going to rig the canines to be adjustable. And I might add a whole bunch of teeth rigging that allows me to reshape the whole teeth and gums, however which way I want, skew and stuff like that. So I'm also looking forward to that. But I think yeah, teeth are success. So. For now so i'm going to move on to the tongue all right one thing that i almost forgot to do is give the teeth a slant if you look at any dental x-rays you'll see that our teeth are sort of angled down a bit so i'm going to grab this first let me duplicate the folder keep this for later I'll just move this into the trash. My job. Have a copy in there. And then come down here, make sure the head is turned on. Go transpose set. Center pivot. And angle this down. About that much. That seems about right. Back the lower jaw. Yeah, that's about enough. If it's not, come back and add to it. I think with how exaggerated this character is, I could 
go a little bit more. The slant of her face is truly exaggerated. So I'm going to go a little bit more like that and move it forward. Yeah, and at any point in time if it's not working. Now I'm going to get the tongue done and when it's finished, I'm going to polish the teeth and the gums and so it can wrap up the inside of the mouth. To start with the tongue, I'm going to do go with a sphere and scale it down. Flatten it. Gradually pull out so I can get something. I'm going to do a split of the tongue. This is fairly easy. I'm going to get the root of the tongue. This is not typically something I do, but as of today, I'm going to start doing the root. I think I might have done it once before. And it's where the tongue basically attaches to the floor of the mouth. So the root. And with this, with tongues, one of the mistakes I usually make is I just resurface. I never really provide enough topology, especially at this front here, because this is where all the animation is going to be happening. And it really needs to be have enough information to deform intelligently. So, do some. Actually, before I build up a minor pre mesh at a lower subdivision level, and some basic form. have to thin this out. Um, human tongue is pretty thick but feline tongue is also really thin. Really thin actually. Um, I'm gonna find a happy medium. piece uh, I really want to get in there is what they call the, I think it's called a frenellum. This thin strip, I'm going to use a cube to do that. Let's scale it down. It sits underneath the tongue and um, attaches to the bottom side. When you lift the tongue, you see it. It does, however, have an interest in thinning out shape. That allows it to taper. Let me activate symmetry, and weld. Yeah, it's really thin. Like Turn on back face. Make sure I have the root attaching correctly. It sort of splays out. I'm just hoping it provides some, uh, sorry, some cooler uh, detail. Character opens her mouth and animation is happening. These are stylized characters. If I Try it this time around and it doesn't have, it isn't valuable. You might just discard it, not use it the next time around. So I'm going to put this in a folder and 
right folder. Solo. And then Dynamesh. Attach it. Attach it. extend really far so I'm gonna continue it Just a little bit. Don't ever turn on back face on any of the move tools. Makes them act really weird. That's as far as I'm going to go. This tongue is just a really simple piece. You can manipulate it a lot at any time. But yeah, very simple. For now, I'm just going to have it rotated. tubular passing but I'm contemplating whether or not I should put it in there it's like this really cool tubular massing at the edge here like this but that might be just too realistic definitely have like a, a split. Definitely worth emphasizing.
and the tip is a lot fatter, but I have no going in that direction. I'm gonna have it be very human-like. I we'll definitely grab some of these properties of a feline. Now I'm going to move it back. Ultimately, this is something that's going to be moving around a lot just to help me work and see the model. I'm going to move it back. Move this into the trash. Okay, now that the tongue is done, I'm going to take these gums to finish. Hide the tongue. Right, first thing I'm going to do is separate the teeth. It's time for these gums to so I'm going to split hidden to get the teeth out of there and do the same for the bottom. I'm going to split hidden. Then I'm going to keep these together. I think I can design them uh, as a collective. I like that. I'm going to try it. One of the things that I forgot that I occasionally run into is when I'm making teeth for stylized characters is every time they open their mouth or smile, I find that I have under exaggerated the teeth gum proportion. So there should be a lot of teeth, even if it's not realistic, it looks better when a character smiles that you see more teeth instead of gum. With the stylized expressions that this character is going to make, the mouth might be open really wide in some instances, making these unnatural smiles and the teeth need to be the primary thing you're seeing. So I'm going to start taking the move tool and increasing the exposure of the teeth. Right, specifically at the front. This is something that is very important at this, this front this end. So I'm gonna go higher. add value to the smiles. I'm also going to adjust these to taper in a lot more. It looks more attractive as they sort of swoop from the jaw down to create this like C shape. So that looks really cool. I'm gonna extend that uh, logic here too, make sure slightly a little bit more uh, teeth and the areas that are going to be directly impacting the smiles. nice uh, C-shape swooping in. Yeah, that feels good. I'm going to subdivide these gums and take them to finish. Actually, I can start doing some of the work here and just divide. The transition out of the teeth is a lot more planar. It's not lumpy, so I'll start there. Now with 
realistic teeth, there's a lot more mounds. I'm going to refrain from doing that. I think it's important to have that super moundy feel. So basically what I'm saying is this is really planar shapes that form these transitions. Right. So I'm going to apply it to the top. I'll divide that and start creating those planar transitions. I think if you saw this swelling on the gum, it means you've injured yourself. All right, so we're not going to have that. Subdividing these teeth, see what more they produce. I'm going to separate the canines. No split hidden. Uh, I have to do it lower. Got to do it lower. Hidden. Let's see if I can come over here and reconstruct. Yeah, I can reconstruct subdivision level. I just want to keep the lower subdivision level a little bit longer. I'll do the same thing here. So, split hidden. Okay, I've separated the canines and select them and divide them. Let's see if their shapes are suffering in any way. I don't want to make it too sharp, she just looks a little too um, wild. So and ultimately I can rig it to change that, to make it sharper or duller. So, but this is fine, this, this works well. I notice it's not good design. It doesn't have that nice um, swooping C shape. So I wanna make sure I capture that from every conceivable angle. Nice swooping shape. Split. I can't see any reason why I might need to split this. Unless her teeth are flying out of her mouth, and in which case it's still easy to separate it in Maya if a shot calls for it. I'm gonna leave it together. Alright, let me give the bottom the same treatment. Seems pretty fine. Okay. 
Okay. Now there's something I have to do with the molars and premolars. And it's here. These parts of it are fairly sharp. Like I want them to have like the outside soup, but there there's ultimately still teeth, so there has to be a little bit of like this plainer feel. When you're looking at it in profile like this, it needs to be a lot sharper. I want them to look like gummy bears in her mouth, so. I want this flattening effect. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same to the top. I think that will be about it. That's as far as I'm gonna push these until I resurface them. And then it's time to just push them to their final form. formed so I'm sure from every conceivable angle there are nice shapes this will impact everything when it's time to pose the character if you didn't polish this part of it adversely impact your final visuals. doesn't matter ultimately as I said I'll rig it to do so that this can be changed and it really is might not be rigging it could just be a morph target that just makes the tips more pointier it's something I mean, that could be animated to go from this really non-aggressive shape to like this very sharp aggressive shape so that could definitely should definitely be a morph target. So I'll put that down. And I think that's as far as I'm willing to go. See? All these weird artifacts here will be resolved. Side is on the up and up. Yeah, I completely forgot. I do these characters so few of them a year, maybe just one a year. Sometimes I forget how much work goes into specifically the teeth and tongue. It's like its own teeth and gums, it's like they're their own character. I'm gonna 
have these stacked like that. It's not a problem for now. lesson when I start creating expressions what changes have to be made so it's time to move on to dealing with her dreadlocks I've collected some reference that's going to help me get to a solution in this first section here I have what I'm calling the scalp logic this is going to help me figure out how the dreadlocks are emanating from the wads of pulled back hair or these sections of pulled back hair so it's a very unique uh, sort of pattern happening or wrapping around of these hairs happening for each dreadlock. In some instances, they are also combined together to form one. I'm still I'm still contemplating on whether or not this is something I should do. So you have like two uh, coming out of uh, their own sections and then winding to form one. But all these are going to help. This is a very good one that shows how the pulled back hair wraps around each strand. So that's what this section is for. This other section here is going to help me with silhouette and design. So what it looks like as a collective, right? This is sort of what I'm shooting more for this look right here, right? And this also means that if I'm going for something like this with how massy it looks, the, my tie has to, might have to change and become something really small. Cause I noticed that with most of these, the ties are a lot smaller and are not as thick as, and, and big as mine. This, these two particular ones, well, these ones over here with this cross hatched uh, or this sort of X like wrapping around of this cloth or this thread around one is something I also want to have. Uh, I also see it here. This is going to help me achieve that on one or a few of them. I want to make sure that all of the dreads poking off in the top have unique design, or if I can add as much variance to the design of each one. I think it will help the overall look and feel or maybe not maybe I just need to focus on making one of them stand out like this and I really think that's what I might end up doing but for their individual shapes I do want to kind of break them up a little bit so I might end up with these pointy tips those barreling tubular shapes I have up top on mine these tubular this tubular look might change so that I can go more for something that looks more real. And she is a snow leopard and I'm gonna have different fur colors, but I do have to consider what it's going to look like with uh, a snow leopard's natural color, which is this off-white brownish color and how it's gonna work with the spots on her face. This section over here is going to help me with the sectioning of the partitions or the pulled partitions of pulled back hair. These reference images are gonna help me with that. There's a, a lot of good directionality going on here as they move towards the tie. With what I have with this character, the ears are pretty high, so I can't exactly mimic what I'm seeing with some of these real dreadlocks on real people. But there are some things over here that I like that are happening specifically on this image. How there's a central one here, this huge central one. So this partitioning is very interesting to me, but I still realize that I can't actually do this exact thing. And most of these references that I'm showing you, the they're very small. I wanna make sure that I'm doing some type of simplification. So a lot of my sections, I want them to be significantly larger so they can just read a lot better from a distance. And when you get up close, I don't really want super small sections. I want like really big, large sections that the viewer can look at and immediately figure out what is happening, right? So these really small sections that I've shown uh, are definitely going to be visualized as larger chunks. And the closest thing that comes to that is maybe like this. These huge chunks is kind of what I'm going for. I think these will look better. So that's why I have this image section off in this little section here, which I guess I'm calling miscellaneous because this will also help me figure out how uh, my flyaways or my loose hanging hairs are supposed to look on dreads, specifically on something like this. Right? It really shows a lot of ruffling and a lot of flyaways. I don't intend for mine to look this messy. It has to look 
fairly clean because the character is dressed up in a fairly clean fit. It's not a tattered look, it's not a worn look, so they do have to be clean and look fresh like some of these ones that you're seeing here. All right, so let me start off with the sectioning uh, of the hair. Let me see what sections are going to work. So initially, I'm just going to start by using a mask to tell me what is the best uh, hairline to go for. So this is the central one. I know that I want a central piece. Looks really good. Uh, how it blends into the forehead, I'm not sure of just yet. Now I have to have this. Right now I'm just gonna try to get a nice attractive sectioning off. See what works around the ears. Come down here, around this side. And now I'm trying to figure out how, I think a nice little swoop like this will be good. But I'm not sure about that just yet. I think it's a simpler thing to do but also to minimize how much uh, pulled back hair there is because ultimately it's going to be expensive. So I want to make sure that I have maybe something, I want to make sure that I minimize how much pulled back hair there is. So what it's looking like is I might have this be uh, a shave. So around like here, yeah, that might be a better choice. So this, this section, all these are going to be split up shortly. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so if I make it so that all of this is a low cut shave, possibly put some type of design there. Yeah, that actually might be a better choice. For now, I'll represent that shave with an extraction, but I'll resolve how it's going to look. I think that's that would be the responsibility of XGen. So that'll designate the XGen. So it's just a low cut fade and there'll probably be some designs in there. So I might have to paint some uh, baldness maps in XGen, or I might just resolve it with color, All right? It's just, it might be a cheaper solution just to resolve with the color, but for now, I need something. Yeah, I think it'd be a better idea for it to resolve with color. So we'll see, I think, I don't think it's, it's gonna be necessary to have to use actually real hair. I'm trying to for this fade, but I might be wrong. So I'm going to treat this as its own section. All right, now I'm looking at the big shapes that are going to work. It's coming very clear that this a lot more has to go into making this look good. So maybe it has like type, some type of avatar airbender look where it's like that. Maybe I should flesh it out completely. This should be its own partition. Okay, so yeah, 
that is a much better design. So let me hide this with dreadlocks. Just gonna have to be hair all here. Definitely underneath the tie, I wanna make sure there's just one big chunk. So it's all gonna meet. Let me try to connect these two for now. Wherever the tie ends up. Make sure just one big one emanating out of there. I may have made this gapping a little bit too big. I want to make sure that the space between the sections isn't so large. You have to be fairly thin. You don't want so much scalp showing. So it's going to be really tight. Uh, this little and to create this partition in the center it's a little bit easier all I have to do is just unmask this like central area so I end up with the central partition right there. okay Very important to pay attention to all of this so that it looks really nice no matter where which angle we're looking at it at. So I'm gonna divvy this stuff up. Rather than just create horizontal lines, I'm really thinking about doing something really interesting. I'm going to just so I can come back here. If I don't like where I ended up, I'm gonna just duplicate. And with these partitions in the back, I'm going to make it so that I have this sort of stacked zigzag feel so I'm gonna come like this with this partition and then I'll do the opposite for here so having a lot of visual interest in the back actually let me try on this side is going with the partition one. Let me see if I might end up having to do this one too. Like this. So that's another partition. And this one here is definitely going to have to come through like that. there and like this like this some of them I am considering winding them together to make them one so but I want to find out the strategic places to do that. I think the best place to do it will be in the central regions to have them emanate and combine, but that might not feed too well. Initially, I felt like it, it, it'll help break it up a little bit, but it's a lot. Right? And I think when I look at some of these more simpler ones, like something like this, where each dread is coming out of just one pulled back hair, I kind of really like that as opposed to this combining thing, right? it might just end up becoming super messy. Just thinking for the center, it'll make it look a lot more wholesome. Have the center look more like a mohawk and then the separations are here, which is kind of what I wanted. All right, it's just a little bit more of a breakup than all these gaps. I want to put the gaps more on the side and have the top more hair, combined hair than anything. So I might end up going with that. So after taking a look at it for a while, I realized that this back is not gonna work. I don't like what I've done over here. So I'm like to soloing it and fill in that, this gap. Let's 
it's not a good partition. It doesn't feel right. So I'm going to actually cut it like this in the direction I've already sort of established. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm starting to get an idea of what I should be aiming for. For this whole central region here, I'm going to go with a combined uh, look. So here, as the hair, as the braids emanate out, they're going to come out like this. At least for this one. I'll try to do these in different colors and on different layers. If I can make sense of it. Uh, I can do white right here, that's fine. So this one is going to emanate also from its little section. And then they're going to sort of intertwine. And then from then on, we're just, just going to be sort of intertwining for at least the two of them until they get to there. These sides, these sides want to join in. They come out and they try to weld themselves into what's already there. And so we'll have this one doing that. So at around here, it ends up becoming maybe a little bit larger. Well, a lot a bit larger, right? And the other side would do the same thing. It would sort of combine in here and then add to the volume. And with back here, either join this or, fi or find a way to weld into what would happen for here too. So this is what I'm gonna do in the whole central part. It's gonna basically be intertwining to form one mass. And the same would apply to the back here, right? I'd be going for this coming together. Right? And this will be the only part that will have this sort of intertwined feel. Let's see if it actually looks good from the side, if that is indeed what is happening, if they're just coming out here and feeding in. Yeah, it's not bad. And this would also be feeding in. It'll have this sort of beaded feel too. Yeah, I think that might work. This one too will come out of here and intertwine and sort of wrap, they'll wrap around each other till they get in there. This will definitely need to emanate correctly. I have to pick the right directions to support the underlying sectioning that has been set, set in place. It's gonna be all these species, they need to combine well to look good as a collective. I'm going to start blocking all of this out. So I'll start off by duplicating this head. Oh, it's scalp. And just to preserve these selections, I'm gonna turn on uh, my wireframe, turn off the line, 
and then I'm going to go group mast just so I have these then I will looks like I ended up with a new selection in there I'll duplicate that and isolate so I'll go auto group I only really need half I'm going to work on half and then I'll mirror to the other side and then try to create some asymmetrical design okay, so I'll go delete hidden because the central part is going to be uh, combined together I think I might need to separate that so I'm going to go solo and isolate these central ones split hidden go here uh, activate symmetry mirror and weld I didn't have to do activate symmetry it's okay so I have the side and that Siri modeler get close enough until I have a face and go all polygons extrude all polygons and I'll just give it a little bit of thickness yeah and that should work and I'll do it to that guy too get really close so I'm on a polygon face and pull it out. Okay. So on solo. All right, and now I should have these mounds. So I'm going to append the sphere. Start with the sphere. Append sphere. Scale it down. one into place okay so let me get started so I'm going to use two brushes here the move brush and the snake hooks brush but first I'll use the move for this to conservatively design this pulled back hair system and have it going in the direction that I want. So this is the fundamental shape coming out of uh, the pulled back hair. It's gonna have to be shaped aggressively. But I like to start with this. It's going to give it a very organic feel. Same here. I'm going to deal with this front part first. Make sure it looks good. And then I'll move the workflow to create the others. One thing I'm really going to have to pay attention to is how thick these things look coming out of these sections. Okay, so now I'm going to start with from here and go mirror and weld, but I will not activate symmetry because these two need to sort of work together. So I'll grab the snake hooks brush, turn on uh, sculptures, 
and start generating geometry. That is going to be the braid. And switch back and forth between the move topological and sculptures. I have to make sure I'm only using it to generate uh, more mesh and not for the actual intertwining uh, process. So these two, like somewhere like here, I can take sculptures and do that and get a resample to get more geometry. Yeah, this is an ideal place for me to utilize sculptures. Let's take a brush to sample. There are many ways to approach this. This is just how I've chosen to deal with this. You can just design one of these uh, intertwined pieces and duplicate it to create all the rest. But in this instance, it's just they're gonna be fairly different. So I want to give each of them a unique look. So this really artist process will have to be the approach I use. So this is about where we get underneath the tie. So this is what I meant by we don't have that much distance to travel. That's why I don't mind doing this. And it's only the one in the front and back that's going to be this intertwined and complicated. I know the ones on the side are just tubular masses. So going up, so I don't really mind. And I realized that that uh, the hair tie being thick it gives me a way to almost escape a perfect match as it goes through it. And what I mean by that is I don't really have to account for how this thing is going to go through the hair tie and how it comes out. All that I need to worry about is how it goes underneath the hair tie and then I can do whatever I want up here. And that would allow it to look realistic. But if you look at uh, my reference here, one of them is kind of like that. It's here, here. There's all this intertwining. But as soon as it goes underneath the hair tie, then the braider doesn't continue this weird intertwining to keep them together. It's just a completely different thing to make it look like dreads. Okay, so these have to come down. a lot of hair. Stuff has to make sense. Okay, that's interesting silhouette. All right, so I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to mirror and weld. And these ones also have to join this mass. Thankfully, they are the only ones that have to do that. not even doing this one at closer to the tie. This is all great because this is all static hair. This is not really gonna move. So if I can get away with something like this, 
I doubt I'll be able to truly get away with it. I think I still have to worry about how this works. I'm just gonna really sit underneath all of this. I might be able to get away with it and just sculpt, do a little bit of sculpting there. I think this one here, I should not have terminated it like that because I, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna terminate it like that. I'm gonna bring it up here and maybe terminate it somewhere up here. It can fit into this little crease. Let me resample it. Make some more geometry. And let it fit into that crease. Yeah. yeah, it should be able to fit in there. Yeah, that makes sense. Unfortunately, I do have to deal with these. If at the very least even have a, let me just sort of moonlight a little to show that they are part of this mass somewhere. I have to let them show because it's the last section and I just, for my own sake, I just want to be able to know that I have um, them either coming in and joining into the mass in some way. Everybody else up the chain, the proper amount of volume it needs. This one, this one is also going to be intertwined with the three up the chain, and then that will be it. That will be the only ones that are intertwined. Well, in the back too, I have to look at the back. I think the back I decided I wanted to let these guys, I feel like I didn't want to combine it. I want them to be their own thing. I think it'll look better if they just, there's two strands going in, but I'll see. So that the only one that's combined is this, these ones in the front. All right, so let me get these. This one is going to be definitely smaller. I really have to go back and look at these chunks and see how big they are so that the amount of hair that's coming out of them makes sense. This one is going to be super small. It's a small chunk. And it's really going to sit. It's going to intertwine with This uh, sculptures feature, it is really amazing. 
I just want to re-emphasize that this is just one way to do something like this, right? ZBrush, there's just millions of ways to do things. Maybe next time I'm doing a project like this and I'm dealing with hair, I'll take a different approach that involves other, t other tools that are just as cool. I had initially decided to use fiber mesh to help me do this, but I run some tests and it's, I, don't, I don't like it. I just keep forgetting how um, fiber mesh is good for previews and stuff like that, but it's still a little difficult to manage. Um, I have some cool techniques, but they, they don't give me the type of precision I want. So I had to abandon. Uh, using fiber mesh as a possible solution. I know these things look really stupid right now, but just bear with me. You will notice as the pulled back hair comes in, we'll start feeling better. Let me sample this, Get some data, and bring this around. haven't yet addressed, carefully addressed these volumes just yet. Well, I'm doing it slightly, but the real work for the volumes is going to come shortly. It's very important to make this thing look right. Can't just be huge chunks of hair where it's just not logical. very clear to me that this hair tie one all this ma mass has to go in the transpose set and it has to go higher but in addition to going higher I think I might have to discard one of these ties the bottom one but I think maybe it might be too early yeah, I'm happy to worry. I kind of like it. The more of it I discard, the more I have to resolve what's going in here to produce this. Um, and that's not entirely, it's not going to be that hard, but if I could avoid that work, it would be nice. I'm going to go Z plugin, transpose master, T pose mesh. Just so I can have these two, these two pieces. Well, not just these two. Mask everybody. Bring them back. Um, and then mask this part of it. And then blur. And just make sure that this part is in fact rotating upward into the hair tie. No one. We'll go Z plug in, T post subtract. Let's 
So these ones, they're not intertwining. I decided that they're just going to be tubular masses. Sometimes you need to see them all together. So this guy also goes like that. Okay, so let me have these masses feeding in. Yeah, this might not be a bad idea to have it angled like that. Posing each other like that is not so bad. Yeah, and maybe this guy has to make space. But be really careful because this has to make way for the pulled back hair. Yeah, I need to really start fleshing out them too because they are a huge part of this design and it's really hard to see the finished uh, the final design I'm going to accept without seeing the pulled back hair. Yeah, I genuinely dislike these individual ones that are charting their own path, but I think they'll get better. They'll get better as they're detailed. Um, but I'm, I think I'm going to stick with only four. Um, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll soon get better. I'm going to chart this spiral path as it twisted hairs. So they're going to be spinning about themselves. If this uh, fails to blend well with the X Gen, then all of these things I'm sculpting will be the guide that I'll use to create the X Gen uh, guide that's going to be traveling, charting this path. But I think these will be successful. So, uh, with the way I'm going to process them, I think they will be ultimately, when I look at it, it needs to just read well. So, it does that we're fine okay these sides for now I think I'm gonna let them be I think they're fine all right so now I'm gonna deal with this the same way I deal with the front I have established that I don't like these singular I like this little bound um, thing where they're intertwining with each other so definitely going to be recreated here.
Okay, I'm gonna start blocking in the pulled back hair. I'll start from the back here. Let's see how it's impacting. So the pulled back hair, the way it behaves is a portion of it. Let me make sure I have a very strong brush. And so a portion of it is really high and merges with. goes over and actually I'm wrong here well it's just an initial buildup but this is in fact emanating like this so it's all emanating so this goes up top and then it kind of comes like this with all shooting up. And then the one on the other side, it stays underneath. So it's emanating also from the extremes, but it stays underneath. And I really should have turned on symmetry for this. Mm, all right, when you have this weird one easy way to resolve it is to go to the deformation tab, tell it to rotate, uh, I think in the Z180, and then mirror and weld, and then rotate it back. 180. Okay, now symmetry is on. Let me shave this off. Turn off scope tears. Smooth it out a bit and shave. And start my little build up. Nope, wrong. Pay attention here. It's radiating like this, and then at here it pulls in like that. All right, so that's how I'm gonna go through. And I feel like with this one, I might have made a mistake. It's not barreling as well as it should. So it's a tubular mass, it needs to barrel. I'll be combining these with their respective pulled back hair mounts soon, but for now, which patterns are going to behave the best back face when using the smooth tool or else it's moving a lot of things I don't need to move. I'm going to give it just a little bit of breathing in first and then I'll start fleshing in what would be the strands of hair. And there's the block out of it. Okay, so that would go like that. And then if I solo, these strands would feed underneath. And these will go all the way. This is meeting up with this, and that this is going underneath. So it goes underneath, this goes on top. And it's very taunt, so th there should be no mounds, it should be like a sharp transition of pulled hair. And turn on its color just so it helps me see the blended result better. So here I'm gonna turn on back face masking here and first build up. I'm trying different ways to get this transition. And then once I have the transition, okay, that's a better way. So I use the build up brush to sort of build it up first. 
and then in a radial manner and then do the, the striations. So that's what you'll be seeing me doing from here on out. Now let me solo and make sure that this over here, the hair is going inside underneath the mass. Okay. All right, and hide that. Okay, and with this one, I guess I do have to finish their trajectory. So I have to chart them, let them chart, continue charting their path. Again, all this will be welded very soon, but I think the continuous shape would be this just sort of twist around. It's a continuation, twist around onto itself. All right, so that's that one up top there. Let me bring everything back, see what it's looking like. You have to be careful with these ones. These ones, as they ride up, I'm going to divide this so I can get some texture on it. They are, in fact, twisting around themselves like this. That's very important to know that. This also is going to be twisting around itself. Same here, twisting. twisting around itself. So, overall blocked actually from a distance and that might that allows us to see it better finished result is going to look like. Now I can start thinking about the silhouette of the back. Yeah, this will taper a little bit more. Okay, get the nice mound at the back these things provide. So when I'm looking at this, this feels wrong. Uh, this needs to be a lot taunter. Like I'm gonna come and adjust all these things later, but you want nice, straight, sharp lines for this pulled back hair, considering what it is. So yeah, it'll be nice and straight and sharp. Wait a minute. I might have made a mistake. I should have turned on back face masking. Okay, so this is what Diamond, Diamond Mesh gave me. Okay, at least this will let me see what I've done wrong. I can run a few smooths to see what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna grab topological. Yeah. It's kind of 
guys run into if you're not careful. in the right direction all right so that should be it should be fixed now I just have to make sure back face masking is on when I am doing these sculpts so with back face masking on probably need to turn it on here too and go back to my striations to do is just make this taunt and run into that issue okay so I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing so I'll come here with back face masking on and initially do the build up so it's initially just building up so that this blends in correctly uh, be careful with that smooth get the edges too much and then start simulating the direction that I want that it's supposed to be in okay, so it'll attach like that I'll solo it and then put the rest of the striations start simulating these striations. there you can move it up nice taunt result okay smooth it out a bit and decide it could be done together so it goes in based on the reference wraps around like that and then inside, it's there. Also pulls from there like that. Okay. All right. So that's the front. So here, I'm going to divide it. Just want to put some information in there to see how this thing is going to work. So if I solo it, then it means by the time you come over here, it's going to be twisting hair. To 
make sure they're really diagonal. I feel like I failed with this one here. It feels wrong. I just really got to feel diagonal. So if I solo this, if this was coming out like this, okay, and then there we go. I'm doing the right thing. And it's just an initial. I have to re come back and redo all this when it's separated. All right, so I'll come over here, do the same thing. something like this is good that when you're simplifying you go with like the larger shells because it, a lot of work has to be done to take it to finish and it's good that it's not as much it's a lot but it's not as bad it's not so much all right so that resolves this side the logic for this side I'm going to refrain from putting in those striations for now, like I did here. And I'm going to go resolve this here. Sounds a little weird the way it's going behind the ear. this blocking out phase now it's time to turn on all of these um, the poly paint just so I can see a unified result and see how well this these combinations these choices are working out So if I was to turn on this, yeah, they're not, it's not bad. Good starting point. So that's what I have to work with. So now what I'm going to do is start isolating these into their, well, pairing each dread with its pulled back hair. Really start uh, resolving how this thing is supposed to look. So starting here, let me solo split it in. I'm gonna start splitting these out, all of these. Split hidden. Here, solo. Split hidden. Yeah. Split hidden. Split hidden, go like that, split hidden. Uh, go to the back, solo. Split hidden, split 
split it in right here. So auto group, so they're separate, split hidden. Okay, so everybody is separated. And now it's time to separate some of these. So here I'll go auto group, uh, delete lower, and split hidden. So the first pairing I'm gonna make is this guy and it's dread. So I'll come like this. And merge down. Okay, so now it's one with its pulled back hair. And I'll do the same for this. Move it down, pair it with its strand. Merge down, so it's one. Same with that guy, solo. This guy, auto group to separate them. Delete lower, split hidden. Grab its shell down here. Let me turn on the uh, polyframe so I have a better idea of what I'm selecting. So that, that guy, merge down with this piece. That guy, merge down with its piece. That guy comes down and they're connected. So auto group, split hidden. So I'll take that guy, come down, merge down with its piece. down, merge down with its piece. So the front is divvied up. They're all paired with their correct uh, pulled back hair. I'll do the same here. Take this down, take this down, merge it down with its piece. with their respective piece. Let's start, let me start with this one. Start at least cleaning it up a little bit. And actually one thing I wanna do here now is mirror and weld these. These are farther apart and they're separated by a very symmetrical piece that I don't mind if they're symmetrical. So I'm gonna go mirror weld. So we can start seeing how this thing is impacting the whole head, not just one side. Mirror weld, mirror weld, mirror weld, mirror weld. And I do have to activate symmetry on those ones so that whatever is done on one side goes to the other. Yeah, that's fine. Here and here. So, pick one of them. So, all right. So with this first one here, I'm going to dynamesh it. Uh, that's a pretty high dynamesh count. I'll probably go with something maybe 300. Let me see what it feels like. Yeah, 300 is not bad. So it's 376-ish, something like this. 
All right, so now I'm going to start really trying to get a result that will work underneath the X-Gen very well. So the first way to try to deal with that is to make sure that first, these are planar, very planar. So I'm gonna make sure I get that planar result. Very taunt, yank. At. Okay. And another thing that is good to do here is to, I'm going to break up these edges. So I'm thinking wads of clumps of hair have them be varied enough that twisting around itself. Let me see. Okay, so it will be twisting. If I'm thinking about it in big blocks, it's twisting like this. Logically, the volume is too much, so I'm gonna have to deal with that because that's that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I have wads of hair. I'm gonna show you how I do a few of them. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of them. But I'm gonna skip to the part where it's done once it's clear. I've done enough of them. way all the way out uh, into the tie.
this combination of careful with how much building up I'm doing. So now I'm just gonna define the top. Maybe it'll be maybe better to do this with the Damien standard. Yeah, let's see how the hair is twisting. of build up Still experimenting with this, so initially I'll try to see if I can take this as displacement, see how well it works with the paint work. If it doesn't, I'll just discard it. Uh, not counting displacement. Okay, so that's how it's gonna flow. Well, I do want to make sure that this is reasonable as far as sizing is concerned. It needs to be a reasonable wide of hair. Like the thickness needs to be consistent. careful how to deal with this. This is in fact a fold. All this hair goes underneath here. So this is it should be treated properly. What I'm looking for when eventually you visualize how like like strands of hair would the strands of X Gen hair would be sitting on top like this. To find those sides. Big flyaways and stuff, and like more. So, yeah, tertiary detail is responsibility of X Gen. And hopefully, this sits underneath and does what's expected of it. something like that. I want to make sure it's 
the guy just covers enough until it goes behind there and then I don't have to worry. So I don't want to make these long X-Gen guides and then now I have to rely on the X-Gen dynamic system for animation. I want to be able to rig it, uh, move this with joints, the main thing with joints more so up there and then just let X-Gen simulate these, whatever it contributes. Uh, so provide like the tertiary animation for the hair and then the primary animation is my to make sure I am still designing a little because when you're painting hair you don't just paint like you want some variation in like the angles you don't just draw uh, the rectangles just stacked so I have to be careful where you see where I've done that and get rid of it variance in, um, in uh, intensity it helps to make it look like real hair or Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen to go. I'll pause the video, do a whole bunch, come back when I'm around here. I got one, two, three, four done. I'm gonna do the last one to finish the back. Dynamesh it, trim dynamic to get the edges and to make sure that the mount is in fact planar and taunt. It needs to feel like it's pulling very uh, sharp. side okay. smooth it out and then start well this could use a little bit more of a planar feel with these ones they're tucked underneath so it's not that big of a deal but I'm going to start with, one thing I didn't mention is I have to be very careful about not just stacking. Um, if these, these details end up being the primary thing that describe the way this thing is, uh, I have to really make sure they are varied. So here, tucks in, here pulls out. Can't just have them evenly spaced when you're sculpting like that. Um, bundled hair, clumps of hair. Don't use as many. Design tricks as possible to sell it as hair. This. And here it's a little simpler. I'm getting into the habit of making sure I stagger these edges. Um, it's kind of give me a, somewhat of a map to follow with. The uh, generation mesh for X Gen. Just gonna be 
staggered. I'm gonna take the build up, recess and pull some areas just to get something different. And then with this one, this is pretty simple, but just have the hair go around as if it's been twisted. That's what we're simulating. Twisted hair. So it should spiral. Try to ensure that the topology also is respecting that. This way when we go into Maya, if I need to, I can just convert, a, create a curve from the topology and then that curve can help with XGen. I have been running into some issues with XGen that cause file load times to really stall and I think it has something to do with curve so I think I just have to start minimizing uh, the use of custom curves with XGen and just rely on guides but uh, I'll run some tests again to see if it's still misbehaving. If it is, then I'll have to count exclusively on guides next gen. In the event that it's not problematic, this spiraling geometry will be very useful uh, to draft those curves. I have spent too much time with this one because it's looking like a croissant. Not here. I need to focus my attention on the exposed part. Okay, so the exposed part is there. And I need to yank out these to feel like pulled hair, hair being pulled out of a scalp. It looks like, yeah, I have to be very careful with this. They're not crescent shapes, they're taunt pulling shapes. So, we really pulling straight forceful line. This is looking very gooey. But when I resurface them, I won't be taking all this detail, but it's charting a pattern that will help me paint. I can even use some of these maps to paint, but probably we'll be painting uh, with some fresh ideas. I just want to see how it's going to behave with all the X-Gen around it and on top of it. Upside down, let your brain get a little bit of a refresh. Make you see stuff better. All right, I'm going to get started on this side. It's here, this one is also a little complicated, but this one is mirrored, so all actions will. So propagate on the other side. 
I'm gonna solo this and give it just slightly a little bit more resolution than the three. Yeah, that should work. And always, I want that nice planar feel. This is something I seem to be forgetting to do. Very important. All throughout this, I have to be paying attention to that. Make sure that it's planar and feels taunt. Should be a good cut. This one is on the outskirts. Really important to get that looking good. I want to keep mentioning that this approach that I'm Tempting right here is experimental. And so I'm about to try things that I've never tried before, but I am using sculpting techniques that I'm familiar with. But the end result is going to be I'm going to be just as surprised as the end result as you will be. When it comes to things like this, it's all about passes, just giving it several passes of sculpt work. And then as you get closer to the end, you start focusing on polishing it. All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of this done. I'll be back when it's time to do this side. Alright, so I got these three done. One, two, three. And I'm going to get the last one on the side so I can move to the back to finish this. So I'm going to solo it. Give it a resolution of about, it's fine, 440 Dynamesh. And more routine, flatten to get that planar taunt feel, and flatten these edges.
I'm definitely going to simplify these into subdivision levels so I can correct the lumpiness because there's a lot of lumpiness in here and I don't want that. I want some really clean, pristine shapes. brush on the corner in order to get like a broken up feel and just cut in like that. And I take the move tool and just design the edges. So that's it for the side and the front. Yep, so it's time to get the back. I think it looks pretty good. So once the back is in, I'm pretty much done with this pulled back part and then it needs to be polished. of this back done and I'll come back when it's time to do to finish off and then I'll be done with this pulled back hair until polish. Okay this is all that's left to do the back top right there. I've decided to mirror them because they're so obscured it doesn't matter if they're very similar because they're really tucked underneath. So I'm going to be mesh them and work on them symmetrically. Not 
here just to make them easy to work on. I'm going to isolate them. But even if it's going to show, I doubt the way it's obscured, it just simply won't cause that much problems. It won't look mechanical, it's just too hidden to be problematic. to go around it and do a little bit of shape cleanup uh, and then I'll move to the top I have an idea about which direction I'm going in for the top for here when I look at the silhouette turn off I turn on color on a lot of the braids the way to turn it off is to go to subtool master go to Fill, but don't fill it with anything and it should it should uncheck all of them so when I look at this I don't like the way this it's kind of cool but I think I, I want that like more swooping shape like that I'll keep revisiting to get it. Yeah, like that. Swooping like that and swooping like this. And some of these individual shapes, I was going to go out of my way to not have them have these interesting mounds to be smoother, but I think I'll hold off on that, right? I've just reserved the right to come back and make whatever changes need to be made. If I put the X Gen on it and it needs some additional design, I'm gonna come back here and, and change it and then re-export it back to Maya. So I'm gonna stick with, with this so far. I'll clean it up as the, I go, I think for now I'll accept this. I think another thing I wanted to also change was this. I didn't feel like this, the shape was emphasizing a nice rounded head. Even though it's charting a normal path, it doesn't feel like it's a little too flat. Some of them are just, have been, I don't have lost their cylindrical form because of all this moving around but I like that because it, it gives it like this organic feel and in an attempt to fix it to get it more cylindrical I'll, I'll have a happy medium between like organic and the cylindrical shape that it's supposed to be and I'll do more of this when uh, I transfer all this detail to subdivision levels is something I'm, I'm going to do maybe in this lesson or maybe I'll do it uh, when it's time to resurface this lesson has gotten very long it's now 
going to be almost six hours. I resolved to go with a more tapered look. So this tubular look that I have right now, that's thicker at the tips. I'm going to lose that and go with this more sharper look. Some of them will be as sharp as this and some of them will be less tapered. This is more interesting and it's, it's easier to achieve a successful silhouette with this as I'm posing because it's thinner and it also looks a lot more edgier. The bulbous looking result that I have right now looks a little too cute for this character. So I'm gonna make the change and in order to accommodate the thickness that's coming out of the pulled back hair, I'm going to make them thinner. I'll just duplicate this and keep it for a long time. So take this and duplicate, hide the original. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to deformation and deflate them to make them about the thickness they're supposed to be. About that much. Okay. This will mean that I need more of them. I'm going to start. Tapering the tip. And give it a lot more treatment, but taper it first. design them properly very very soon. Let me just focus on this base and make sure I resolve how it's coming out of. Okay, so how it's coming out of the hair can have any of this irresponsible overlapping. really needs to make sense. Another thing I resolved to do was also thin this out. It's looking way too thick. But I might change what kind of a tie it is. I kind of just wanted to make it a sleeve that I could put some lettering on. So that, that might, might change shortly. I'm hoping that I don't have to add more because all that is is a new joint chain that it has to have. So I want to be um, careful about how much more I add. That's why I'm being very careful right now by first positioning them and then I'll look for the, see the gaps and then depending on how many gaps we have, I will what to do. Okay. I'm gonna come here.
There seems to be one right there that's not emanating correctly. And I just realized that if it comes down to it, I may have to add as many as I need and take the, the hit that comes with running a joint chain through all of them. Just have to deal with it. What I will not resolve to do is use a ribbon system for each. I'll just have basic FK functionality the master FK control to control sections and then squashing and stretching and that shouldn't be that hard to produce so before I continue finessing what I already have yeah it's looking good uh, I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to do another round of positioning, but first I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to go to the core and then I'm going to spin them around to get a, a new part. I might want to spin it more, maybe like that. Yeah. And now resolve the collisions. What I will do is change just to add a little bit of variance. I'm going to deflate them just a little bit so that they're slightly thinner than their counterparts. And then start positioning them. cases might be best to just do a whole new rotation. Now that I think about it, because of how many they are, there needs to be some more interesting design than just this like tubular massing so I might have to change course I might have to change course and go with a different look because I just don't want to be looking at this huge mass with very similar tubular design so I might need to push and get a little creative or else it's just not going to look as interesting There's something about this that makes it look so cool. Yeah, these two. Pulling away at it, see what their final silhouette is looking like, and I'll make a final decision. Yeah, this feels like a plant, a pot of some type of plant. It's just so even, it doesn't feel like hair. I think I'm going to stick with this. This is what I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna go do this type of butter design. And another thing that I'm doing wrong is that it doesn't flow out in arcs. This thing is very rigid, it's kinky hair, so it's kind of, it has takes these interesting shapes, right? These planar, shapes right but it doesn't pour down it's shooting out and it does make you feel more potent and in this instance it is twisting out of the core and turning into that so this is officially my master reference i, I realized that this was one of the first images that i showed of what what i, what I was trying to achieve so this is what they're going to look like so i'm going to make the modifications to match up with that i'm going to give it a little bit of noise uh, several tiers of noise uh, to break 
to break up the detail, the surface detail. Perhaps even do some build up to shape them initially. Let's get a little bit of designing of each piece. adding the variance detail now. Turn on the back face. start adding those shapes, those interesting shapes. Yeah. A lot more haggard, you know, like weird swoops. It's either pointing in the air, it's more stiff, it's stiffer, stiffer is the word I'm looking for. A stiff result. Now I'm going to add some initial large scale noise. I'm going to go to surface, duplicate this. I'm going to go to surface, go to noise. scale noise to really break it up. Let's see what it's gonna feel like. I'm gonna go to layers, add a layer, put it on a layer. So I'll go yeah, it's initial nice breakup at this stage. start doing my own designing and then uh, as I subdivide I'll move to to uh, smaller scale noise this doesn't stay true to the haggard look so I'm gonna lose that okay. this one is interesting 
pointing in the opposite direction, but it does need some. Well, actually, no, it's nice that it's a little bit different. Yeah. With something like this, there's just too many of them to go with um, with just one look. But you re I really have to add visual interest. Now I'm going to start processing what I'm doing here with this tie. This double tie thing, I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to go with what I just said before, which is a sleeve that I can put some lettering on. So I'm going to go delete hidden. Okay, delete lower first. And then delete hidden. And then center. Should just go get a new cylindrical piece. I think I can design this. Planar surface. And then also, it breaks up all the, it does add some detail contrast because these things are going to be so busy with information. Okay, now I'm going to subtract from it with, I'm find the insert brush. I think it's primitives H, yeah. So I'm looking for a cylinder. I can hold down Alt. Turn on double. And move it into place. Scale it up. Uh, close holes. hidden and then for these two I'm going to put them in the new folder uh, turn off render uh, boolean and okay I'm going to turn all this off trash. Right, so I have an, an actual shape that is a tie. It feels like a hair tie. to do is I don't like how all of them look the same so I'm going to isolate a few of them do a deflation I think at this stage I have maxed out the amount of effect noise is going to have on it. It's just going to keep swelling up the mesh. So what I'm going to do is going to go to layers, turn it off, bake all, and then start, and then divide it. I think it's time to take it to the next level and polish them. Uh, 
I do have to pick one of them to put the tie around, so. Yeah, it's, you have an idea of what type of design you want to do, but ultimately, if it doesn't succeed, it's not successful, you're going to have to play around or else you end up with a really cheap looking result. And too much work has been done to settle for an amateur looking result. So some sculpting is going to have to happen. Still have this, let me auto group it. Again, hand pick, hand pick some of them and force them into a little bit of a deflated state in an attempt to continue this breakup. As much as I think I've pushed it, I think I'm going to need to push it some more with noise. So I'm going to go to layers here. Recall and in this instance, I'm going to stop using layers. It's just slowing me down. So I need to grab these. Go to noise. Hit it. Bring this thing back down. Increase the strength. And apply to mesh. Break up, divide, and now I'm going to give another general noise. Go to edit, change this. No, that strength needs to be up there. getting there but I'm gonna to have to do a lot more to add visual interest so now it becomes a responsibility of just sculpting so these things are really look really abstract that just break through the silhouette in a very interesting way. with a uh, height, your heights. I have to do some height staggering. I think that adds value. And look straight on at her. A lot of these feel like the same. has become more so now about design than uh, getting a successful design. And even if it defies realism. Uh, yeah, on this side, play some of these. I do not like this anymore. From the front view, it's not really contributing well. It's not really doing 
helping the silhouette. In the front view is the most prominent view. So this will now need to change its the course of its shape. potent than it was looking. And over there too, they all look like they're in the front view. I need to stagger these heights. Go like that. And this guy might be a little too thick. it might be a little too small so and short so in order to help improve the silhouette I'm gonna make two changes first I'm going to make sure I get this back into its folder and move all these guys to the trash then I'm gonna go transpose Set and center. Move it up first and then scale it up. On the larger point to fit. Yeah, that feels good. But then that does mean to come back here, grab this tie. I know this lesson is, is crazy long, but it's, it's almost over. Just a lot of cleanup. It's almost there. Feed in a lot better. larger, looks healthier.
accommodate this with that thing. So I think it's good. Scaling it up did it really well. go through and pick which ones are going to have the tie so that's still something I have to do I think I'll pick it so there's two in the front so you can see one in every view or at least two in every view I'm going to pick the ones that are going to have the tie I'm gonna start by isolating some of them that I believe will This may be about four. And I'm going to mask everything and just look like this. And see if these are the ones that tie in this view, if it looks good. Yeah, that, that one will be clashing, so that would be not so good. So if I isolate this, yeah, maybe three is good. Oh, because it's a sheer volume of them, it won't hurt to have a fourth one. So I'm feeling like maybe this one should be it. So I think that might be it. These are the ones that will receive the tie. I think it's a nice breakup. I'm going to be playing with a lot of colors in uh, Substance Painter to design this thing. So I'm going to invert this. And group mask, group mask, so that I have two different colors, and I can um, isolate them to do the work. So I'll say split hidden. Uh, I have to go to a lower subdivision level to do that, and hope that it propagates the subdivision data. I think it will. I'll go split hidden. And it worked. It preserves the subdivision information. So the ties, I'm going to auto group this. Do a group split. I'm going to go down to split here and do a group split. Okay, that's all for them. So I'll start with that one. So, and get my mask pen, crank down the focal shift. And do a simple extraction. Initially, I'm going to have this It's escalating up the chain. And then well actually no. I have to extract this first. See the way it looks. Simple extraction at one zero zero one. I'll 
set that. And go to geometry. Uh, sorry, deformation. Polish by features. And also polish by groups. And I'm going to resurface it at a very low number, like 1K. Actually, before I do that, I am going to lose, I'm going to go to Z remesher and make sure I'll lose the thickness for now. Go delete hidden and then resurface at 0.5. Okay, and I'll give, for now, for its thickness, I'll count on dynamic subdivision. So I'll go to dynamic subdivisions and give it a thickness. And make sure the thickness is going in the opposite direction. And so I have room to play with it before I uh, commit to it. Subdivision, I'm going to crank that down. So I can make necessary adjustments. Yeah, for a part like this, actually, I'm going to go back to deformation, I'm going to polish by groups. Yeah, that's what I needed. Polish by groups. I'm glad you can still do that with dynamic subdivision on. All right, so now I'm going to go back onto this thing, solo. I'm actually going to pull it out with its tie. I can isolate them and deal with them. So now I'm looking for the opposing direction. I'm not even connect this here like so. Same treatment first. Let's see if I remember what I did. I extracted, except um, did a initial polish by features. See an initial smoothing, and take the upper outermost level, delete hidden, and then remesh at point five. I remesh at 0.5, I go to geometry, add dynamic subdivisions, give it thickness in the negative direction, turn off smooth subdivide, and then, ah, oh, this is damaged really badly. I should have done some checking. Let me turn off dynamic subdivision. That's weird, I shouldn't have done that. Let me retop at 1K this time so it can preserve all its detail. Yeah, that was the issue. I'm gonna uh, do at 1K from now on 
so I get the full strip and none of it looks damaged. So turn dynamic subdivision back on. Smooth goes down, give it thickness in the negative direction. Increase that thickness. And then in solo and go deformation polished by groups. Yeah, and then that smooths it up. So if I take a look at it now, I should have my tie and I can decide whether this part is elevated. I'll deal with the granular details later. like See how it's looking like with the whole piece. Clean it up a little bit before I go repeat this. All around, it looks very sloppy right now. It's like this. for a while. Yep, it looks good. Looks really nice. So I'm gonna go get the rest. All right, after doing the other side, I realized I don't need that many, right? I want there to be a lock with a tie on it visible from every angle. So from the back, we see two. From here, we see one and then two. And I think this is enough, right? Any more, it's just I might be messing around with design. For now, I think that's it. Let me merge the, the two. I put these two that I made in the unique folder, but these two that are no longer going to be designed they have to be merged down and and i think there's a way to do that without losing subdivision levels i think i go all the way down to one and go all the way down to one and i should be able to go merge down say always no that was wrong I'm going to try again this time with them at the higher subdivision level i think that's what i have to do if i go merge down yeah you have to keep them at their higher subdivision level and then they'll retain their subdivisions as you merge them so i'll try again here 
merge down. Yeah, and now I should have my all of them back in there at the their highest subdivision level. And I'm not going to try to push this thing to clean up at this stage. I'm going to reserve it for when I resurface everything and I bring it back and my eyes have taken a look at this a lot more. There are some things that I might want to change or add, but it'll definitely once, once everything is resurfaced and it's the final rig ready topology, uh, that's when cleanup will, will be finalized. All right here, I, I'm not even gonna try to do more than is done right here. This is a very complicated piece and my eye needs to look at it a lot more. And ultimately, even if I go and start doing my um, X-Gen stuff and it's not working, I'm gonna have to come back here and play around with everything. I need to smooth things out and play with these ties. I just don't completely trust X-Gen with rough surfaces like this. But in this instance, because it's the detail is intended to be varied and uh, messy and uh, noisy, I think that this non-planar surface detail might help the X-Gen create some interesting results. I'm going to close the lesson by testing two facial expressions on this character. On the right side of the screen, I have a snarl. I'm going with an expression that's closer to a animal. I want to see how successfully she's able to create this animal-like expression. And then on the left side, I'm going with a more human-like expression. When it comes to the smile, I really want to test this out because I want to see how well the teeth and gums I've created are going to work when the character tries to pull apart the corners of her lips. I'm going to go with a more natural smile so the eyebrows will be hiked up and the teeth wouldn't be so clenched. There'll be a little bit of a gap. Like when we smile naturally, we, we, these are two properties of a natural smile. It almost feels like a laugh. An authentic smile is like an authentic laugh. And with this, I really want to do it because I want to see how these, uh, this wrinkling of the upper face is going to work for her. I might be going for one of these two expressions. Either I'm going to do this symmetrical one or this asymmetrical one, which looks really cool. And I'll use these as assisting reference. And same with the smile. These are the main ones I'm going to be trying to go for. This is my main reference and everything else here is assisting reference. I have two cartoon smiles. One of them is from Zootopia. This one is from the artist specified below. Another thing I'm going to do with her, once these two expressions are done, I'm gonna pick one of them, most likely the snarl, and I'm going to go into Photoshop and start painting in all the features that are coming further down the pipeline. So the eyeballs, the twinkle in the eye, the eyelashes, the eyebrows, all the fur on the face, the fur coming out of the ears, uh, how the flyaways and ruffled hair is going to be on these dreadlocks and the pulled back hair. So it's going to be a sketch over just to give me some insight into what is coming. All right, so I'm going to get started with the smile expression. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a subdivision level. It's easier to pose and manipulate that. So I'll duplicate this and with symmetry on, I will resurface at about, maybe 5K should be fine. And I will hide all this stuff and project the detail onto it. Solo, divide, project, divide, project. That should be enough for what I'm about to try. going to transpose master to do this so turn everything back on and go to the lowest subdivision level and start posing this smile I'm gonna make sure I go back and out. And I 
big smile. Smooth out some of this geometry. Make sure I get that. And I'm going to have to take this up enough just until I start to see the gums. This is more swoop, has a more swooping feel. But also with doing this, one thing I'll have to pay, keep track of is the cheeks. When you smile, you do have, they, they do swell up. So. When they go up, and push the eye. Teeth are the wall position. And this is what I was trying to gauge. Look at the reference, there is a lot of occlusion here. All of this is meat, it's cheek meat, so you want to be careful not to um, get too much of that. Uh, get the right amount of it. No, he's gonna have to come up a bit. I think the teeth are the correct size. This is primarily what I wanted to see. I might be wrong. I might need to go for bigger teeth. Go up in subdivision level and start putting in some of the details that I need and also I, need to, I do need to account for the fact that this will be slightly closed up yes. and I am also leaving out a very important part of this stuff is the small line so I need to get the small line go right over the nose like that and then First, most most of us also have that. Yeah, it's not bad uh, to make sure that this is properly tucked. Let me do it at a lower subdivision level. It's supposed to be completely obscured by the time it gets near. Yeah. Okay. I think the teeth have to be bigger. I'm going to make a copy of them. Let me make this planer. And also deal with detail here. It needs to be smoothed out. Okay, another thing about the smiles is you can actually do this, but if you notice most of the smiles that I'm looking at up top there, let me duplicate this and move this. It's nice when the top is a straight line, like it's close to a straight line. Okay, but then that exposes a lot of teeth. And all that is telling me is that the teeth and they need to be higher. All right, let me do this and duplicate this folder. This is where my teeth and my gums and everything are. And bring them down. I call it rename folder. Call it smile fix. 
and I'm going to go with make sure everything inside here does not have a mask. Bring the resolution down. Actually, it doesn't matter. Subdivision level three is not as ruthless as higher subdivisions, so I should be fine. I'll just hide my original teeth and go transpose set center. Make sure that this is higher and I'm going to increase its size just a little bit. Let's see what I have. Let's see that. Yeah, the size is good, but the, I've increased it too high. Transpose set, so it needs to come down about there, so we see a little bit of the gums. And then I have to move it back. Pretty, it's more of a goofy end right now. I'm wondering if it's still an issue of size. I don't think it's a size issue now. And transparency. I am starting to see that perhaps the angle is not as extreme as it should be. Or no, no, I think I'm right with the angle. We can leave the angle as is. Let me look at it with a different color. Yeah, it looks pretty successful. I think the teeth getting any bigger is not the way to go. And I even will separate. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really good. It's bad. I think yeah, that's about how much the teeth have to go up to accommodate this expression. Doesn't seem so weird. Yeah, it kind of, it looks right. As close to it as possible, I think it's fairly successful. But one thing I do want to do is this isn't weird weird thing when you smile and your teeth are this clenched. So now that I know that this is the fix for the teeth, I'm going to create teeth for this specific smile. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate the folder, make sure this fix goes here. It's going to be the new size of the teeth. I'm going to hide that. But here, to get these teeth, I'm going to merge down. Um, merge down twice. Here, and merge down. Okay. Now that I have the teeth for the pose, I can Open it just a little bit. Feels weird. Probably should open it the way the jaw would swing open like that. Because I have some. Well, that's another thing I completely forgot about. I don't know. I don't swing the jaw open, so shouldn't need to. Oh, I'm starting to see something else too. I might have made that. I do need to consider that. Even looking at the real smiles, this is farther back, it's a little bit farther back. All right, I'll save this and use it as a reference to move the main teeth back. When the mouth back comes in and this thickness is established, the thickness of the lips and the thickness of the in inner cheek is established, it won't look so gappy. But even still, I'm wondering if I am uh, spreading this a little bit too much if I should be going in like that and yeah it doesn't look that awkward it doesn't look that awkward it looks like a healthy smile uh, what I may have done a little bit too much of is take it too 
high. I think it should be down here. And ultimately, when I did that move, what I would actually be doing is swinging the jaw open. If I want the teeth to come down, I have to swing the jaw open. So I'm gonna grab this. Because it's not feeling, it's actually a good, it's not a bad smile at all. I'm gonna blur the mask and then rotate the jaw from where it sort of would be rotated. Yeah, it looks like a very anime-like smile. So let me take this and turn on transparency and sort of go to where about the jaw would swing open and just kind of swing it open just a little bit. also it's just this cheek volume it really is that is something I'm going to simulate with the morph target it's just this cheek has to come up yeah that might have been what was push that smile line So what came out of this test is that the teeth needed to get bigger and the lower teeth need to be moved back a little bit more. So when we close our mouth, it really, I think really does depend on the person. No. Yeah, I think it either, it really does depend on the person. It's weird because when she smiles, there doesn't appear to be an overhang. I didn't know that we had an overhang, which is really weird. I'm an anime version of this. But all these people, I hope these photos are edited to put the top teeth always in front of the back teeth. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it depends on, on the person. Either this, these photos have been edited and this is how smiles look attractive when you show more of the top teeth. So there's been some editing done or just some people have a big over a lot of people have a lot of overhang up top but that's something i never really paid attention to that's weird the hers are about lined hers are lined this appears to be an overhang and everybody else is anyway this is why the, the the teeth have their own control system and i can at animation time move them front back side or whatever so i might just leave the original at the distance it is and while i'm posing if I find that I need to simulate that effect, I will um, use the control system of the bottom teeth and comes to move it back and forth. But I think that's it for the smile. So I'm gonna move on to the, the, the snarl. Successful like everywhere else. Good start. It's time to do the, uh, the snarl. I've decided to go with a side snarl. I don't care as long as I get to open the mouth and see what it feels like with the mouth open. So I'm gonna do this one where I emphasize the creases on just one side. And I have some more images of side snarls to assist me. 
Yeah, initially I was gonna go with the whole top area, but uh, I don't wanna do that. I just, this is a more cooler expression, more like a, has more personality to it than just that. Okay, I'm gonna use this same uh, one, a copy of the subdivision level I created previously. And I'm going to use the teeth from my smile. I don't think it would be a problem, so I'm going to duplicate and get it out of here. Duplicate, and get it out of here. So then this will be, yeah, so that's my smile test, and this will be my big SNO snarl test. And I'm going to need the tongue for that, this too. So I'll duplicate it. And that should suffice. The great thing about these two expressions is that, well, with most of these things where the mouth is open, I'm not doing like a reverse draw. It's not like you're not moving the top of your face. It's just the skin is sliding on everything up here and it's mostly the jaw swinging open. So there's no movement of joints up here. Otherwise I would have had to include everything up here in the expression development. So, so I'm going to take this and go Z plugin. Transpose master, T pose mesh. Then I'll grab, isolate the head, make sure I get the teeth, bottom teeth and tongue. And then come over here. Actually, first, I might need to first isolate the head, make that same turn off perspective. Make that same selection I made prior. Uh, switch over and get these out of here so I can make another mask selection here. Bring everybody back and now I should have the inverse of that blurred and I should be able to now rotate my mouth open. Yeah, and the teeth follow suit correctly. And I could continue here, but I think I will Z post subtract. So I'll go to Z plugin, Z post subtract to get everything back. This is a test body, I should have always just... ripped off the bottom half. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here now and start with this side snarl. To turn off symmetry. Enough to be able to see these teeth. and it won't slide. I have to be very careful because it doesn't have the capacity to slide, move the nose. Actually, no, this entire collective will move up. Right, it's sliding, it's sliding the top of the mouth along the teeth, but should not do is lose volume. If anything, this would be more beefier now that it's like that. And let's just start hinting at these. Move this a little bit higher. Foundational. Soon. And furrow this a little bit. Make 
sure that I'm getting the correct flow out of the nose. Very careful when you're doing these things to not create buildup that you cannot really account for. If there's this much pulled out flesh, then the recession needs to be just as um, aggressive. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. See, the more I feel like it needs to be even pushed even more. Yeah, I'm trying to be careful. There's no need for care though, because it could always just duplicate and push. Let's see how it's looking. Here we go. It's really pushed. And. Yeah, I feel like these. This mouth really needs to be pushed. Like, should we really be pushing it? At animation time, I won't be pushing it this far. So, yeah, not that much. Yeah, I can see the teeth without playing with the tongue, so I think I'm going to leave the tongue intact. Move where, it, where it's at. Get an interference from... Actually, I do want to do something with the tongue because it appears to be penetrating the teeth. I think the teeth sizing was a good idea. This is about the right size of the teeth. I wonder if it's possible to... I think there'd be some degree of... of... Uh, mounding here too, just not the same as what's on the other side. So I think I have to put just a little bit of... Yeah, it should be very animal-like. change the intensity of this fold because it's closer to the point of uh, the source of all this creasing so like I did a horrible job with um, yeah like here if you were to do this this is really tight so I think this should be like Should 
do it. this eye shut a little bit more I also don't think you can get away with well it's fine this adds a little bit of asymmetry all right so that's it for here I think this face design is not bad it's gonna make for some interesting animation interesting morph targets all right so I'm gonna take these two expressions or at least this one and try to sketch maybe for both of them and sketch over them to see what the final details will look like when they're in all right so that's it for the snarl looks pretty cool all okay so i'm in photoshop now and i'm going to do a quick paint over to try to visualize some of the stuff that is coming down the chain the first thing i'm going to try to get in is what these eyes are going to feel like. I'm going to make the brush really thin and start seeing what some of this are actually, yeah, let's start seeing what the fur is going to feel like as it There's also going to have to be a fair amount of fur here, just blending the into the top part here. It's something I really actually want done really well. Just gonna blend in to this. And then let me deal with now the fur, which will be Here's the flyaway hairs. Under like this. see how it's going to completely obscure this block of sculpt data. So 
So it'll look cool. Just gotta be careful to make sure it doesn't look too messy and scruffy. So these ones, I gotta be careful with them. Might need to be super light. completely forgot about is I do have to deal with the lashes. So those what are we going with? It really helps. Okay, so the lashes will also work. And then the last, well, not the last thing, but another thing to think about is the brows. Whether or not I should put in brows, because another thing she's gonna have is a lot of spots. So I'm wondering if the spots will do the job of letting people know how much translation is happening in the brow. But ultimately, let me see if it will help to have a bit of a brow. Eyebrows. Last thing I want to overlay, this one I'm going to overlay with a multiply. So I'll do like a multiply and see how I should deal with these spots because ultimately this is not going to be her skin tone, but I want to pick something that will try, will mimic it, the, the, the way the spots feel. So if I was to go like that and I crank this down. Even if it were like actually, I, I don't know. I can't determine how I'm, how dark or light I'm gonna make those spots. So I need to see what they feel like at their darkest. And I'm really trying to do with the spots is to avoid putting them anywhere near her mouth here. I don't want expressions on the mouth to be impacted by spots like in these really weird spaces. So I don't, the thing is I can try. So I'll try and put it, I'll create a bunch of them that uh, where it's not on the mouth, it kind of stops around here on these outskirts here. And then if it, it doesn't hurt, then I can see if they will be okay if they're all over her face, right? Come down here to this side of her face. I, I just can't figure that out right now. But yeah, this this is going to be is the first visualization of what she's probably going to end up looking like. I'm going to put grab a white brush and set it to an overlay, should, yeah, and then I should really shade her teeth 
just to be brighter. So I see what's. Really sloppy shading. to get this visual. Yeah, she's really pretty. She looks cool as hell. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Might make these, uh, I'll get to control with XGN how this flyway, how these flyways are going to look and probably change them for different animations to get different things on her. You know, have this, you have a zipper. Let's put a little bit of this something over here. Her uh, bodysuit. It's gonna come shortly in a future lesson after we get him sorted out. So, I said I'll leave this open to receive some type of font if possible. But yeah, so that's that's her. Um, this marks the end of this lesson. This is just too long, it's almost six probably gonna be about eight hours. In the next lesson, I'll do the same for him. He's gonna be a lot easier because he doesn't have this hair. This hair was really complicated. But I'll take, I'll go through doing his head, teeth, tongue, and all the other things that need to be done and run him through tests like this too with expressions.